Let's see. You don't have to pick on your old. Oh, these, these are way better than yours, Dan. Even, I can't even hear through them, but they're still better than yours. <laughs> They, they don't look even, better. They don't even go. work, and they're better than yours. Yeah, very loud. Very loud. A little loud. A little loud. Turn mine down, Dan. What are you? Two? Four. No, I'm four. He's two. Yeah. Two. 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 Good, two. Man. Two. Two. What? How you feel about that level? Uh, a little higher, actually. A little higher. A little. Bit. Oh yeah, because you guys share one. Testies one two. Testies. 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 <laughs> oh yeah, it's good. Nice. <clears throat> yeah. How do I sound? That's good? up to that's that's Real that's good. subjective. It, I yeah. I mean, I, I knew not, that, but that's up to Maybe that's up to the world. Should I wear both? You can try. Well, maybe now they'll fit. <laughs> yeah, they will now. <laughs> um, so you're you got a really successful podcast around here called On the Stacks. Yeah, are we are we on? Maybe. Is this a, well, yes, hey. sir. Did you uh, did you lose a bet? Why are you here? <laughs> um, John Fry actually paid me. No, he didn't. He, did he, he really? He pay, I, I, I was I was I signed something to not disclose this, but he did pay me to come on here. Did you uh, did you happen to listen to the episode that he was on? I didn't. It was no. insane. I, I tried to, but he put me to sleep. He, uh, Dan. <laughs> 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 nice. Dan, what happened after that episode? Between me and him? No, but with, with, uh, Barstool. Oh, and, with the Kirk Did you hear about Oh, this? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But they, go on, tell, tell me though, because I, I think I got bits and pieces of it. I probably so know, but we, s- we, we let you listen to some of this, right? Oh, yeah. So, uh, I might have that promo I made for it where they were just shitting on us where I, I yeah, I chopped it down to like the 10 seconds. So we so pull fr- it up now. Fry's okay. on. And then um, so Fry like tells us like, you know, barstool, blah, blah, blah. I didn't know dick about Kirk Minahan. Yeah. You know, which is, I, I only did just through him. I'm just, you know, whatever. I guess I'm naive or ignorant. Um, so all of a sudden, Dan's like their their next episode is called What a Week. <laughs> Get the hell out of here. I swear to God. Nuh-uh. Stop. Yeah, okay, yeah. Wait, I guess I didn't see this then. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we went. <laughs> oh, this is great. Oh, yeah. So we like, if, if if you have a fragile ego in this whatever podcast world, that is not the episode. That is not the guy you want to have. Definitely not. Oh, they just shit on us Did repeatedly. Yeah, they? but it was mostly Fry. Okay. Which I'm okay with. Yeah. It was just like, John... <laughs> I'm a curious person by nature, and every time I like asked a question, they're like, "What are you a fucking idiot?" Like about me, and I'm just like, I'm looking at Dan, and Dan's like, "This is hysterical. This is the best thing that could have ever happened." So it was I'm a like, roast. So I don't, I, know, I, don't, I don't know anything about this. Oh, really? No. Yeah, I do know you have, something. Do you have happened, the clip? But I, 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 I missed the there. one with John. Do you want to try to find yeah, it while we're? I don't watch yeah. anything back. So I don't know. I, I thought and they d- just mentioned it. No, they spent like they spent like an hour and a half. So John was D- on dissecting the podcast. No, just sh- sh- shitting on, shitting us. on a roast. It was John a roast. was on <laughs> there. <laughs> John was on there because he was going for a producer position. So they were doing like a contest to be like our uh, producer for the show. He was on their podcast. Yeah, and he's like an active listener. He's a P one of the Menahan show. He's a Menahan. He does a podcast okay. also about the show with other guys that also love the show. If yeah. you're not into talk radio, this is all just like craziness that people don't understand that goes on with talk radio so he's like a super fan so he it's like swift by the way that's an understatement yeah super fan is an understatement. yeah 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 Yeah. so he went on and they would talk about him and then he came on our show and we kind of talked about it but they being a good talk show instantly were just like fuck this guy let's rip him apart and see what this guy this guy fucking john from scranton thinks he's hot shit so let's pull all the audio and rip him apart for an hour and a half at which point we caught some of the the flack. The, yeah. But myself as a super radio fan listener of other shows and understanding what's going on, John actually sent us a message and was like, hey, you know, you know, I, I hope you don't take it too hard or like whatever. And I was like, look, man, as a radio fan, the best thing that could ever have happened to me in my life is some radio show tearing me apart. And Opie and Anthony used to do this thing called Jocktober, mm-hmm. where every day on their show, they would pull local radio shows and just rip them apart and everything. So I was like, dude, I just got Jocktobered. I lived my dream. I want nothing else in life. Yeah, and then da- yeah, and then Dan took a bunch of arsenic and tried to kill himself. <laughs> oh, He's like, "There's shit. nothing more I can do now." So, poor, did poor, you find it? Guy. Well, no, because I was talking. <laughs> <laughs> the worst talk radio guy ever. Dan and I started doing podcasts um, like 13 years ago. Yeah, once. I, so you and I were just talking about me getting sober. Yeah. So I got sober in August of 2010, and I think him and I started podcasting maybe September October. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was Shyla. Yeah. There was this girl Shyla who used to be on KRZ. And we went to high school with her and we just started doing that. And what do we, it was called, uh, anti popcast, anti popcast to be back in 2024. Oh, uh, I just saw that somewhere. <laughs> it's him. Yeah, it's me. Oh. He's trying, he's trying to bring up okay. member berries. That's what it was. I clicked on, I, I clicked on it. It must've been your IG. And I saw that and I'm like, it's it's said, him. bring it back from what year was it? 
2010. I have yes. a promo for that too. That yes. I every every now and then I like to bring it back and be like, oh, it's yeah, going can, back again this year. Can you find that one, or are you going to keep talking? Oh, I got that one too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dan sucks. Yeah. Hey, I'm switching cameras over here while I'm trying to. Why, open why, up this why stuff. is Dan even here? By the way, I don't know. I have no idea. We yeah. don't know what he does. You want me to leave and see there. how quickly the show works out? <laughs> There have been podcasts where we're nine minutes into it. He's like, guys, I, I forgot to start the camera. I love it. It only happened like once or twice. I forgot. That's yeah. That was a long time ago. See, the trick is the trick is we are recording. The trick is <laughs> Dan, are we recording? I, I'm pretty sure we okay. are. So him and I started doing that. And then that's how we hopped into. So like we I I started opening up my business because I'm a fucking idiot. And then uh, we moved over here. We didn't podcast for like two years. And then I started doing NEPAC with Rich. And then that kind of went to the wayside. And then I started doing one for 25.8. And then COVID hit. And then all of us, it was me, Micah, Dan, my buddy Alex Mulfettis, who owns Center City Print, and uh, Aja uh, from Ghana. And we all, we were just talking, we just wanted to sit down and just talk shit about like the COVID stuff. Like we we're just like something's going on in the world and we just want to, and that's how like that's this how that's thing started. started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. And since then we've had on like, CIA guys, state chefs. representatives. Yeah, we, we need to we need to like trade guests. By the way, I see that's it. Like yeah. we live in a bubble. Like we don't like. I just did. Uh, I just did the middleman podcast a couple weeks ago with, with uh, Kevin. Kevin's a really great guy, man. It was so nice for yeah, him to reach yeah. out to me. Middleman, yeah, yeah. I think, I think I might have just uh, been DMing back and forth with them recently. Do it. He's a good dude. Yeah. He's a really good dude. He does it in his living room, man. But it looks like a studio. It looks great. Yeah, and it's a, it's an interesting time. And and I I really like the dude. I, like I I started listening more because of that. And it's like you know this podcast world like. Who's got the time to listen to everybody's episodes? I know, right? And the, the funny thing is, like, you know, I like I used to listen to mine a lot more. Well, like, so, until, until you're like, I don't need to know anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah I was good. like, all right, I'm done, done hearing my voice. But uh, a lot of people always say, they're like, yo, like, everyone's like, what, what podcasts do you listen to? And I'm like, I don't know, not none really. And they're like, huh? And I'm like, yeah, I don't know. I just, I'm, I, I always say, like, I'm, I'm too busy producing my own. Sure. And some mm-hmm. of the other ones that we're now doing. But I was like, who the hell has time? I mean, I appreciate everybody that has the time to listen to mine. Like, thank you to everyone that, that, yeah, it suffers through all my I think, shows. I think that's the well. Micah chooses not to, like. Yeah, I, I I'm one of those people that I um I I don't like to follow other people and what they do if it's something I'm involved in because I am a uh, what's the right animal I'm thinking of? I don't know, but I just did, did you say animum I, animal? Oh, okay. I imitate. What's the animal that imitates? An asshole, a parrot. sure, a parrot, <laughs> parrot. Um, <laughs> thank you, thank you for being here. A Bill. naked mole rat, yeah. Uh, that's just in my personality. Like if I see something I like, I'm like, ooh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take that. So I don't watch other podcasts because I would just get on here and try and do that. Yes. So I intentionally don't. Yeah. Um, I intentionally. Um, you don't want to be influenced. I don't want to be influenced. Yes, I'm, I'm trying to the, the point, same way. To the point where, and I'm, I'm going to tell you guys this, it's going to shock you. I actually looked you up on social media today. Me? Yeah. Me? Okay. I knew about your podcast. I refused to watch it. Good. I was like, I know yeah, it's good. good. Yeah, please don't. But yeah. I, I know, I know it's <laughs> good because he's successful, don't, don't but I don't want to be like, I don't want to in my mind be like, we should be more like that because you're successful. Yeah. So I intentionally didn't. I actually broke my rule and I looked him up today. And? Uh yeah, I I I saw things about you. What'd you say? Anything um, good? That you recently went through a little health scare. I did. Yeah, I did. Before, do you want to talk about it? Wait, before we start, yeah, yeah. Can we do a little cheers here. Are you are you drinking that? You drinking that? Do you one? want us, do you want bourbon or do you want to drink the? I'm gonna drink bourbon. Okay. Do you want me to get you Dan? Do you want to drink out the cup of Christ? That's the cup of Christ from Indiana Jones and the Last is Crusade. Is that what that is? Yeah, yeah. With him, cheers. He oh, you're gonna drink it cheers, that boys. way? Fuck yeah, Micah. Cheers, cheers. The Alex Jones conspiracy one? bourbon is what he's drinking. And dude, honestly, thank you for bringing can. These are I've I've I ironically came across them the moment I saw you hawking them. Use code OTS at checkout. You'll get twenty percent off. Yeah, and oh, if that's you, a thing. Use yeah. Code, use oh code, yeah. yeah. Use code OTS. You'll get twenty percent off. Nice. And if they're interested, drinkcan.com. If two ends. Two ends. I love it. If they're interested, you can use code W A W. Wait, are we doing this? No, we're just no. I'm, we're just W A W A W P. He's over there. Like, Dan, quick, for. sign up for the affiliate program <laughs> yeah. now. <laughs> Hijack the code. He can't do that and switch cameras at the same time. I'm trying to pull up this don't video. Dare him. Please don't dare him. <laughs> well, we got to Let's 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 try to do it so we can ask a question so you have time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you you yeah the health scare. I I totally well, I, I yeah the, yeah let's yeah. what what. Uh, what we primarily focus on, well, it's, I, I think it's because of me where we just primarily focus on the things you're not allowed to talk about. Yeah. 
and good yeah. and it you know some people like it some people don't um but i think it's good to talk about things um what happened because no, I, I no it, idea well because <laughs> I, I heard you talk about it, and the weird thing that happened is that happened to my brother-in-law a couple years ago. How old was he? Uh, same age, roughly. Okay. Uh, about two, three years ago, his heart rate went up to like fucking 190 or 180 or something, and he was home alone. My my sister wasn't there at the time, and he uh, he's one of the best guys in the world, so when he tells the story, it's hysterical. If it happened to me, it would be the most tra- one of the most traumatic things I've ever had. No, you'd still laugh. I, I laugh about mine now. He... It was terrifying. When he started telling me like what happened, I'm like, that is terrifying. And it came out of nowhere. So what, what was, what was this? Was there, did you, did you eat anything spicy? No, no, it was just, it was, it was actually uh, Easter. It was, it was e- Easter it was, Sunday. It was, it was Easter Sunday. It was in the evening. Real, like real late. <clears throat> like it was, uh, it was probably, it was actually 11, like 1130 at night. And I was just sitting on the couch by myself. My wife was already up in bed sleeping and it just all of a sudden just like a, like a flip of a switch. I just, I felt it in, in my chest. I had no idea what it was, but like I knew something was wrong. Did it feel like, um, do you know like when you almost get into a car accident? Yes. And you get like that burst of, did it start off feeling like that? Y- yeah, kind of, sort of. Okay. Um, <clears throat> but like it just, everyone's like, whenever I, whenever I've been telling the story, a lot of people immediately kind of say, oh yeah, I, I know what it feels like. I've had a racing heart before. I'm like, no, no, no. It wasn't just a racing heart. I said, imagine your heart rate going from 60 to 180 in less than a second and then jumping back and forth everywhere in between from 60 to 180 just going all over the place like it, one in, in in literally less than a second your heart could be 60 then to 80 to 180 down to 120 back up to 180 and just all over that's then that's what it felt like so it's it wasn't just a racing heart like you could literally like feel it like fluttering Pumping. yeah, yeah. Yeah, like it was like the weirdest feeling in the world. Jesus. Yeah, and and at and at at the time, like I didn't know, like I had no, I had no, I didn't even, I don't think I, even, I'm embarrassed to say, I didn't even know what AFib was. Of course, I heard the word AFib, yeah, mm-hmm. but you know, never really looked at, never, never really knew. What's well, something here in like Grey's Anatomy? Yeah, you're like, oh, I'm going to AFib. You're like, oh, okay, yeah, right. yeah. and I've never watched that show, so right? I mean, like, so how would I know, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's the second time that came up today. <laughs> well, we had a guy in here earlier today. He's like, you know, like in Grey's Anatomy, and I'm like, you're 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 in the army. How do you know Grey's? And he's like my girlfriend, and I'm like, all right, yeah, yeah. So what was what did they ultimately like? This was this was like a 12 hour saga, wasn't it? It was, uh, yeah, yeah, probably yeah, something like that. Um, but yeah, so <clears throat> what I what I did, like, I actually write. Like literally within like 30 seconds of feeling it, I got up and I immediately put my Apple watch on because I somehow remember I wasn't wearing it at the time. And I remembered that the Apple watch has that ECG feature. Yeah. yeah. Which again, like I, I've never used it. Right. Like I never had to. But I remember when I first got this, this, the newer version of the watch, mm-hmm. like the first time I put it on, I'm setting it up. You know, the ECG thing popped up and I was like, oh, what the hell is that? Right. And I did it. Like I remember doing it takes 30 seconds. Yeah, you hold the crown. Hold, you just hold yeah. the crown for 30 seconds. You, know, you can see it and then it tells you afterwards. But I remember doing that when I unboxed it for the first time, like, I don't know, a year ago, whenever I got the watch. But um, so the first thing I did was I got up and I threw the watch on. I'm just like, I just I was like, I'm going to go do that ECG real quick and see what what the hell is going on. Right. So I do that. I do it one time, sit back down on the couch, do it one time. Immediately, it says AFib. And I'm like, I looked at it and I'm like, well, that can't be real. Right. Do it again. Right. Do it again. I do it again. It does. It. I literally did it four times in a row. And it came up the same thing every single time. And I'm like, okay, well, maybe it's legit. Uh, and, but again, I still, and then I'm Googling, I'm like, what is AFib? <laughs> right. Cause it, oh, uh, no, 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 yeah, no. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, of course. <laughs> but honestly, cause I really didn't really know. I didn't know how bad it was or wasn't. Right. And I'm, I'm by myself, not by myself, my wife's sleeping. And I didn't want to wake her up and scare her for nothing. Right. So I'm just looking it up. And of course, the Apple Watch is also saying, you know, maybe go to the emergency room. Like immediately. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I woke her up and just like, I was like, Hey, yeah, my watch is saying I'm an AFib. And she's like, well, I think we need to go to the ER. And I'm like, Oh really? And she's like, yeah. And I'm Mm -hmm. like, all right, well, I was like, well, I think I was kind of in denial. I'm like, nah, this this can't be happening. Right. I was like, just give me like a little bit. I just want to try to relax for a few minutes. Cause when I Googled it, it says it may work itself out. Like it just naturally. And you know, I don't know if that, that might be the case with some people, not all. Uh, so I, thought okay well this i'm 35 years old i'm very healthy right i'm just gonna lay down for a few minutes and maybe see if it works itself out and well it didn't and then this is the crazy part of the story and this is the part that i, I laugh at and other people be like dude you're fucking nuts yeah i laid down to try to relax i got i got i actually i wasn't relaxed at the time but i got so relaxed it didn't go away but i fell asleep 
And everybody's like, dude, you- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I literally fell asleep for about two, uh, two, two. I can sleep my way out of this heart attack. Yeah, two or three. I, I fell asleep for two or three hours. And I saw the Apple Watch on and at, at literally at 5 a.m. on the dot, it startled me awake. Like, you know, like you see like in a movie where it's like you just like sit forward like real fast yeah, like, yeah, like wake up in like a sweat like yeah, i wasn't I didn't, shit. I didn't wake up in a sweat but like i just literally like sat up like real fast and i was like whoa and i remember like looking at my watch right at that time too and i just got another alert on my phone that's afib and like literally right at five o'clock on the dot my heart rate was 181 oh my god i woke up to my heart rate what was it what was it a few hours earlier uh like just same thing i mean it was anywhere it was from, still at, it was still up yeah, there it, it was averaging my the average heart rate was about 130 that's like, that's like what happens when you go on a like a, a jog or a sprint yeah probably a sprint a sp- yeah i've yeah. only ever gotten my heart rate to the 180 once and i thought i was gonna die yeah like it was during uh it was during murph we were my wife and i were doing murph and what the, what's murph it's a CrossFit workout. Oh, it's, something I wouldn't know about. Yeah, but it's okay. like the most insanely <laughs> stupid. It's a military workout. Okay. And it's just really stupid. Um, it will kill you. Yeah, um, I've heard of it. Yeah. And yeah, I got up mm-hmm. to like 178. And that was pushing I mean, myself you feel, to the feel absolute like, limit. But do you feel like... Oh, it, it feels like somebody's just like double tapping on your chest. Mm-hmm. It's it's a strange sensation. Wait, yeah. so you're... Wait, 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 wait. So at 5 a.m. we decided to go to the ER. Yeah, but hold on. Yeah. So for three hours, your wife let you sleep? Well, she, I, she, because I told her, I was like, I don't worry about it. I'm like, I'm just like, you know, it was in the middle of the night. And I was she just was like, like, okay, like, Grey's Anatomy's on. I'm like, yeah, she, she, <laughs> she's like, I'm going, I'm going to watch the AFib episode on Grey's Anatomy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, get educated. No, but uh, I was just like, I was like, don't worry about it. I'm like, I'm like, I'll wake you up in a little bit. Because that's what I told her. I'm like, just don't worry about it. I'm like, I'll, I'll be good. Like, I'm, I'm pretty sure like, oh, I'm like, I'm just, maybe it'll work itself out. I'm like, I don't know. And she's like, okay. So she like laid down trying to relax. And then, you know, we both fell asleep. She checks the life insurance policy and just goes to sleep. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah she's like, there's enough money. <laughs> I, I, could, sleep. Yeah. I could kind of come out of this a winner and not have to murder anyone. This is a good, good deal. Go lay down, me. sweetie. You'll yeah. be okay. <laughs> yeah. Here, here's a, uh, a cold washcloth. So clothes. when you go into the hospital, what are they like? Are you immediately in? I was, but you know what? The first nurse actually laughed at me. Good. Like, good. He, yeah. Yeah, good. yeah. Our healthcare system's in a great yeah, place. I, yeah. I will say everybody after that was very nice and very helpful. And I mean, you know, but um Oh, you that gay podcast <laughs> guy. I don't like you. I don't help you. <laughs> yeah. But like I went in, I was like, I was like, hey, you know, yes, the symptoms blah blah. I mean, like right when I checked in, they they did actually take me right back. Like I didn't even sit down in a, in the waiting room. They sent me back out after for a few minutes, but they took me right back, obviously, and hooked me up to an EKG. And, you know. The, you know, the, the the nurse or whoever it was that did the EKG, you know, she couldn't read it. She just, you know, just like said, OK, here, do this plus there. Right. <clears throat> and then, uh, OK, go sit over there with him and then, you know, we'll check it out in a second. So then he was the one. He's like, hey, so what's going on today? You know, and then I have to repeat my story. I was like, oh, well, you know, <laughs> yeah. few hours. Well, I took out the garbage. Yeah. And then- <laughs> I fell asleep and ate it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was like, I was like, yeah, I'm like, I, I'm like my I just cut to the chase. I was like, my watch said I was an AFib. I'm like, I, my heart's been all over the place for the last six hours straight. And he's like, oh, yeah, everybody says that. Everybody says that. That's, yeah, that's what he, he goes, ah, er, like, you know, about the watch. And I'm in it. He's like, ah, ha. he literally, I'll never forget. He's like, ah, everybody says that. And I'm just like, I'm like, okay. I don't know. What, what would I say? You know? Yeah. Like, and I didn't, I didn't know. I'm, I'm going off my watch. Now, the watch isn't, it's not medical grade, but I'm, it's pretty freaking accurate, I think. Right. So, like, literally two minutes later, the, the lady who did the test comes walking in with the strip of paper that has, you know, my heartbeat. Yeah. And she just goes like this to him. And he just like looks at it, looks at me, and he goes, Okay, yeah, you're an AFib. And I was like, okay, now what? So so what is the now what of AFib? Like what happens? Like I think he's gonna tell us. Yeah. I think we're I, tell I think you? we're I think we're close to f- yeah. figuring out how terrifying it is. That's called a that's called a transitional leading question, Marky. I didn't take your journalism <laughs> class. <laughs> At least somebody knows what they're doing here. Oh, Thank fucking you. Thank you, Bill. <laughs> Thank you for coming on Bill, here. Mike, Bill Bill yeah. fucking suck each other off in the back and do their own show. <laughs> I'm on one today, apparently. You are. <laughs> you are. You're good, Dan. You're good. The trick is to not let you speak at the beginning. Yeah. yeah. Dan, Dan, you're doing great. Like once every three years. He's, he's on fire. Like this. this guy's on fire. Yep. Over here. Yeah. I'm be- pulling up clips and shit over here. You have no idea. You know, it's it's the it's the headphones. It, is. it really yeah. is. It's it those really headphones. Is. It's the Sony. It's his first pair. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> my first <laughs> Sony. <laughs> I remember my first Sonys. All right. Yeah. AFib. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. So he was just like, he's like, well, he's like, I'll send him. I'm going to send you back on the, out in the waiting room there and we'll, we'll bring you back, you know, soon. You know, they'll do a your wife's with you this whole she time, is. right? Yes, she is. Yeah. Yeah, what's she doing? She's well, she was out in the, the in the uh, oh, so she's the, not even with you. She was in the waiting room. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so go out and they said, you know, hey, we'll bring you back in a little bit. We're gonna do some chest x-rays and whatever else, and then it'll be up to 
you know, them to determine what's next. I'm like, okay, you know, he couldn't really tell me much. Right. So, so I went back out in the waiting room and, um, I probably waited, I don't know, maybe maybe a half hour. Not even. Maybe not even. And your heart's still... Bu- 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 oh, yeah. 100%. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah. And I'm, of course, I'm like checking it. Like I'm doing the ECG. I probably did it like 400 times. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. And, and, it, and, it, and it sinks hoping, your phone. Hoping mm-hmm. like, oh, it's over. Right. Thinking yeah. like, okay, this is going to go away. This is going to go away. Yep. It wasn't going away. So, yes, yeah, so they took me back, did, did, did uh, you know, did some blood work, chest x-ray, sent me back out for another few minutes. And then, and then they came out and got me and then they brought me into a room. And, you know, you know, legit, like in the bed, like hooked me up in the bed, hooked me up to all kinds of machines. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, they, the, you know, I think one of the cardiologists, you know, whoever the, uh, on, you know, the, the doctor that was on, on staff for the ER, you know, came back, obviously asking a million questions. And a lot of the questions, like every, all of them kept asking me, so like, are you, are you sure you're not just like hung over? Like, were you partying last night? Because they said this, that's a common thing. And I didn't know this. So it's called holiday heart. I've never heard of it. I've never. You've never. I, I may have first. heard of this. I feel like I've heard so, of it before. Yeah. yeah, like around here, like it's a local colloquialism. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's probably popular around here with the amount of drinking and and. Well, there's a bar and a church on every corner. So yeah, of course. Yeah. So yeah. So they're like, you know, what we? I, I was like, I'm like, I did have a few drinks last night. I had two glasses of wine and like a beer or maybe a beer and a half. Not much, right? And I'm like, listen, like I don't drink. Like I, I mean, I drink, but I'm not not like I used to. You know. Yeah. And, uh, and they're like, yeah, cause I'm like, well, what's holiday? And they're like, yeah, a lot of people come in like after the day after a holiday. So now this is April fool's day, right? So this is, you know, this is April 1st. Or oh, that's day. right. Yeah. That was April this fool's year. Day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Crazy. Right. And I'm like, no, I'm like, I wasn't like, I, there was no, um, like, I mean, like, yeah, I had a few drinks. I'm like, but no, I'm like, I'm not hungover. Like we are dehydrated. I'm like, I drink a gallon of water a day. I'm like, no, like I'm not dehydrated. Like I'm always hydrated. I'm just, just always been that way. And, um, <clears throat> okay, whatever. So, you know, hook me up. Then they, they uh, first injected me with something, some type of IV. I can't think of the medical name for it because it's really complicated. But they they injected something that was that's supposed to kick your heart back into sinus rhythm, which means nor- you know normal rhythm. Uh, you know, I kick you out of AFib and lower your heart rate. So again, like my heart rate was like averaging like 130. And when they injected me with that, like they, they they'll know that they said they'll know like within like five minutes or even less if that was going to work or not. And then they're like that's step one. I'm like okay. I'm thinking nothing of it. I'm thinking like okay, they, that's just going to do it. I'm going to pack up and get out of here. They do that. It doesn't, it didn't work. The only thing it did was it did lower my heart rate. It brought it down to like just under a hundred. So okay. now, now my heart rate's like 95 to 99, like just constant. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. Not, not jumping like crazy, but yeah. just, just, you know, it brought, it brought it below a hundred. Right. So it did half its job, but it didn't do the job of, of taking me out of AFib. Right. Right. So, so it's still fluctuating. Yep. Just average. Still fluctuating, lower. but just lower. Okay. Yep. Lower. Yeah. Just, it's just that the, the chambers just aren't synced. That's what it means. Right. So, okay. So yep. that's what AFib. That's, okay. that's exactly what it is. It's just, they're not synced up. Right. The two parts of the heart. So, uh, so then the, then the, the cardiologist comes back in and, uh, and he says, uh, did I see a, psst. Well, he's open up his can promo code OTS, <laughs> promo, promo code OTS. We get 20% off. What a week. Bob Dan, let, <laughs> <laughs> bastard. <laughs> Dan, let us know what you think about that, by the way. Let me know what you think after you try. Oh, this, this is your favorite one. It is blood the, red right? or blood, blood orange. We call it blood red, whatever you want. Yeah. Blood orange. Blood red. Cardamom. Can. Oh, Dan, stop. Jesus Christ. That's good. Really okay. like that. <laughs> Isn't that delicious? That is really good, yeah. Yeah, thank you. You Refreshing. just held it in front of the camera and went, can. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so the cardiologist came back in and... Uh, what the fuck was I even saying? He, uh, oh, so, okay. Okay. So he's like, th- that didn't work. Right. It just brought my heart rate below a hundred. And he said, okay, well now, now we're, he's like, we're gonna have to shock you. And I was like, huh? <laughs> like, I almost like giggled. I'm like, yes. I'm like, what? That's like the paddles, right? Yeah. Yeah. So he's like, he's like, we're gonna have to shock you. I'm like, I looked at my wife and I'm like, I looked at him and I'm like, shock like you know like you see in the movie i'm doing yeah, this because yeah. that's uh-huh. everybody does this right like i'm like shock like you see like in the movies and he's like well yeah like that's that's that it, we shock your heart back into rhythm and i'm like seriously he's like yeah and i'm like i didn't even know that was a thing i'm like you're serious i really didn't think he was serious like i don't know he said just in the moment like a lot, so much going through my head that's the moment i would have really started panicking i i kind of did yeah a little bit i don't think i was showing it probably as much you know yeah. but like you're like ah, this isn't good. Like I'm worried about it. I should go to the hospital. Yeah. As soon as they're like, we need to shock your heart back into whatever, and yeah. you're fully awake. Oh no! So that was the thing. They did. They do put you out. Oh, but they it's do. Still, it's okay. still scary as hell, right? Like, well, because you don't know. Like, yeah. What if I don't? This wake is up? the last time I see my wife. I'm surrounded by strangers. Yeah. Just had a baby two months before that. Second yeah. baby. You know. So the nurse is a bitch. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. First guy, he was a bitch. Yeah. Dan, don't ever stop. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's a scary, like, it, it, oh, yeah, I it mean, was. in that moment, you in, go at, through a yeah, lot in that of... Moment. Yeah, then that, yeah. That, that's when it kind of got real. And then I'm just like, wait a second here. This is like, this is like kind of serious now. And uh, yeah, so he's just like, all right, well, we're going to, you know, we're going to move you up to the, the the heart hospital, you know, the floor, right? And uh, and then they'll, they'll, they'll do the procedure. He goes, we can probably get the procedure... Excuse me. We could probably get the procedure done today. He goes, we can probably do it at like one o'clock today. And now, it, right at that time, it was probably like eleven, eleven thirty. He goes, oh, so yeah. Now you got to wait two more hours. I got to wait a couple more hours. Yeah, <gasps> yeah. Uh, well, and that's in your head, and it's all in my head. Yeah. So I would have been like, just put me out now. Yeah. yeah. Can't you just shoot me in the mouth with a forty-five? <laughs> like can't you just like, <laughs> can't we just do that yep. instead of fucking put me out of my misery? So yeah. what is I for people who for the. That's a very rare thing for people to happen. What yeah. is that experience like to get knocked out and shocked? Well, so, I mean, obviously, I don't remember any of it. I mean, all, all I remember was just them putting me out, and they also had to they also had to uh, uh, put a camera down in down in through my heart to check for any blood clots first, <clears throat> because if they had they have shocked me without checking that first, if I develop if I if I had already developed a blood clot and they shocked me, I would have been dead pretty much. You know, I would have had a stroke probably, probably a stroke and maybe possibly die. So the first thing they did, holy shit! So you know they knock knock me out. They'd How do they put a camera into your heart? I have no idea. I didn't really didn't even ask. ask. Didn't ask, but but down through through the pee hole. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Still, a little, <laughs> still, I'm still a little <laughs> sore from it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, yeah. It was uh, uh my, my pee kind of just falls out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, and it's yeah. bloody. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. weird. But yeah, so they uh, did a a camera down through my esophagus, down oh, wow. into the heart to check for blood clots first. And as long as there weren't any blood clots, then they proceed to do the shock. Obviously, there were none, so they did the shock, and the first attempt, it was successful. Sometimes they say, sometimes they have to do more than one, and but they didn't. They only had to do one, and brought me right back into rhythm, and you know, I was out for probably like an hour and a half, and I woke up, and I, I, I just remember waking up. My wife is sitting over here in the chair in the room, and I was obviously very confused. I'm sure, you know, almost everybody here has probably been knocked out you know, anesthesia at least once. And you know, I wake up, I'm like foggy and I'm just like, I look over and she's like, you're good. And I'm like, what? She's like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm awake now. I'm like, I'm, I'm like, it's all, it's all done. Like everything, it worked. And she's like, yep, it worked. And she goes, I talked to the cardiologist. He came out, you know, and talked to me right after. And he said, your heart looks great. I, there was obviously no blood clot. Everything looks good. Brought you right back into rhythm and you're good. And I'm like, I'm good. And like, I, I think I'm so, I'm so like, I'm thinking to myself, like, is this even real? Yeah, am I in like, heaven? I, yeah, or yeah, or hell? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, is this, you know, oh, no, hell is the yeah. Wilkesbury <laughs> hospital. <laughs> yeah. And the bitchy nurse is your only nurse. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But yeah, so they're like, okay, you know, probably going to keep you overnight just to monitor you, make sure that, because they said, they said a lot of times with people, and I guess maybe it's more so with patients that are older, you know, that they actually go, they revert right back into AFib, even after oh, okay. the shock. Some some people like revert right back in, like almost immediately or within like minutes or even like an hour or two. So like, you know, we're probably going to keep you overnight. And I'm like, OK, yeah, whatever. Sure. So but then you know, a few hours went by that, you know, come in, check every once in a while. It was all it was all good. You know, knock on wood. I haven't had any any um no episode or incident since then. And they, they ended up releasing me. They ended up like releasing me that night. Like because 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 so I was there in one day, all in one day. All, all in one day. Yeah, I was, I was, I was at the hospital for probably about twelve to fourteen hours. Who's, who was watching your baby in this time? My mom. Is she, what's she, shout out to my mom? I don't mean to be like prying. That's all right. Is your wife like, uh, like calm under pressure, or she, uh, she looks calm, but inside, but inside, I think she's a little, you know, anxious as probably as we all are, you know. I mean, but you come out and she's like, you're good. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like well, something my Russian wife would say. You are good. I think she was. Up. I think probably because she was so relieved at that point, you know, because it was like that moment before they put me under. Like you know, they're lining up all the carts outside of the room. That's a lot to take in a short amount of time. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, yeah. and it's like it was like so weird because I'm there's so much going through my head. Like, do I like you know? I mean, I'm thirty. I'm thirty five years old. Like, we don't have a will per se. Like, we don't. You know what I mean? Like, not that we really need one, kind of really. But but like. There's probably there's a lot of things that not that she doesn't know what to do or wouldn't know what to do, but like God forbid I were to have passed, like where does she go? Like you know the life insurance, obviously, like you know some of that stuff. Yeah, you know, but it, there there's a lot. I'm running all that stuff through my head. I'm thinking to myself like, do I tell her 
So, you know, is there, should, should I say something? Do I tell her where the gold's buried in the backyard? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But, you know, but, but me, I was just trying to think positive and I'm just like, you know what? I, I don't need to tell her because I'm going to, I'm going to be all right. Like I'm going to come out of this all right. So I don't need to, mm-hmm. I'm not going to say anything like that. Cause then that's just to don't, me, it don't was just put it out in the universe. I, I didn't. So I was just yeah. like, I'm like, I'm good. Yeah. I'm fine. I'm going to, I'm going to, even though in the back of my head, I'm like, fuck, am I going to wake up? You know what I mean? But yeah, I didn't want to like make her even more nervous. I'm just like, we're fine. You know, said, I love you. She walked out. I'm like, I'll see you in a little bit. I'll mm. see you soon. Or whatever I said. Oh it's like, like a that. fucking movie moment. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. When did you, have you always been like put out positive energy? Or, I think so. Or, or were pretty you much. cynical sooner and no, earlier think, in life? No, I think I was always, I, I think I've always been pretty positive. I think I get that from my mom though. She's a super positive she person. Is. She is. Moms, moms are the ones that make us who we are. Moms are the best. Except Dan's mom. She's terrible. <laughs> My mom's a saint. <laughs> <laughs> There's zucchini bread in the back. The second day I'm offering to you, you can't have any now. I had a piece yesterday. <laughs> oh, you son of a bitch. It was delicious, too, because it was made it was with really love. Good. It was really good. It was made with love. Okay. <clears throat> I mean, you're like my my mom is the clo- like my mom and I used to fight so hard because we're so alike. Like, it's just like it's like the same person. Yeah. And now uh ever since i got sober she's like my she's like one of my best friends Mm -hmm. like she's like she'll call me and we'll talk for fucking three hours and it's about nothing and usually it's like one of those things where like you smoke a joint and let mom go yeah and you're like like, what yeah you're like you good you good (laughs) she's still there yeah and she used to be a teacher but she has a mouth like a truck driver which is the best because she's from west side but it's it's the thing about moms man i don't know like it's always it it, i always do you ever watch saving private ryan oh yeah I always go back to that scene with Benicio Del Toro, or not Benicio Del Toro, Giovanni Ribisi. Oh, Remember yeah. that part? Yeah. Where they're climbing the hill and he gets shot and all he's asking for is his mom. Yeah. And I'm like, man, even, oh, the, even the hardest dudes, dude. like in that moment, you just want your mom, you know? And it's fucking crazy. It is crazy. You know? And it it's is. just, you it fight is. with them and then you're like, ah, that's the last, that's yeah. the, that's who I want right now. Yeah. And I, and I think, I think we don't, we don't give moms enough credit. Absolutely mm-hmm. not. Not at all. We don't. My mom's also one of two people who have knocked me out through violence on purpose. So I think it's kind of like a tough love. With my, mom. <laughs> my mom is the yeah. polar opposite. I think of your mom. She's just like as my mom told me to shut up once. And then she went in the room and cried because she felt like a horrible mother. Yeah. You made me do this. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. You she felt that. horrible for doing it. She like beat herself up over it because she told you to shut up. Yep. My mom is the kindest human being I've ever met to a mm. fault. Man, she's I never met your mom. Have I met your mom? No. <laughs> We've been friends for like a decade. <laughs> you're, an, you're an asshole. No, no, we went. So the one t- we went on a road trip and the closest I got was I went to the where they work. Yeah. What's that place? It's beautiful. What's that place called? It's like a, it's like a religious place. Mm. Yeah. It's a uh, ABWE. A- ABWE. And it's it overlooks Harrisburg. It's beautiful. Mm. Yeah. But he, but Mike is like, you want to go see a cult? I'm like, fuck, yeah. And it, you know, they're not really. <laughs> yeah. I just watched that cult documentary on Netflix. Uh, the Texas. Uh, what was that? What was that called? Uh, Which one? Um, uh, I don't know. There's, there's a guy out in Texas. Waco? Dan, uh, Waco, yeah, Waco, the, the, Waco. Oh, Correct? Waco's amazing. Yeah. 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 Did you watch that? Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, my God. I just literally watched it like a few days ago. Is that the one that Did came you? out like a couple of years ago, though? Like a little bit I, older? No, I, I think it's a newer I, one. No, I, I think it's it just like came a, out. It just came out, I think, in 2024. Oh, I'm thinking like the reenactment one that I saw. Yeah. Oh no, that was good too. But there was one from like over a decade ago. You yeah, know this this one and this one had like it said like never before seen yeah. footage. Like yeah. So okay, you watched it. Oh, you know yeah. what I'm talking about. Yeah. Wild. That it's, was a. T- that was documentaries it was, it was a three, on a three part. Documentaries on cults are kind of like a, a a little passion of mine. Like I told you, I've been watching hunting uh hunting Hitler lately. I'm obsessed. Oh, with it's it. on Netflix. Obsessed with it. Yeah. I'm just a big documentary guy. Uh huh. I like so, documentaries. So, yep. The Waco thing in hindsight, because I remember, I remember Waco. I remember, I think it was right after Oklahoma City with the McVeigh thing. No, Oklahoma City actually came after. Yeah. Did it the really? crazy part is just from I know the only reason I know this is just from from watching Waco. Mm-hmm. But uh, it was it Timothy McVeigh? Yeah, he literally was at the site uh, in Waco, like when when during the whole hostage situation, or whatever you call it. He literally showed up there and was like hanging out outside of his car. My understanding is that is was that because part of, of Ruby Ridge? Inspiration. Yes, yes, exactly. It was after Ruby and, Ridge. Yep. And he, I think he, the the bombing that he did in Oklahoma City, I think was the same date as the final day in Waco. I think that the really, yeah, whatever it was, like it was what it was the anniversary of it somehow. And I, I forget how the dates lined up, but the dates definitely lined up. And yes, like you, I think you said, 
he it was like his uh, that was his inspiration for doing the Oklahoma City bombing. Do you, do you subscribe to the theory that uh, Timothy McVeigh acted alone? I don't know. I don't know enough about it to be honest. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. Look enough into about that. That'll take you down a rabbit hole you will not enjoy trying to come out of. Yeah, yeah. I will. Because I, I mean, I well, Waco in and of itself is well. It, you got to start with Ruby Ridge, then Waco. Okay, I didn't. Then do that. Oklahoma yeah. City. Yeah, and you got to watch it like. There's always two sides. Well, there's what three sides to every story. The yeah, yours, year, mine, and the truth. Right, and it, and and objectively, you could probably say that like Ruby Ridge, Waco, um, it, it, there were parts of behavior of the government that should not have happened, and it and it seems to have escalated the situation. Oh yeah, um, that was that that's that's what I took out of it. Where it's like you guys did not have to do this. Like there was there was a conversation going on, and I believe the attorney general at the time was Janet Reno. Mm-hmm. I think so. And she ordered all that. What do you like? Did you just laugh? I'm sorry. I can't stop thinking about the Jan- Janet Reno dance Will party. Ferrell? Yeah, it's so funny. Will Ferrell. Did you ever see that? I think so. <laughs> Pull up the video, Dan. <laughs> He's like, I can't. I'm switching. I can. Um, I can do quick. Yeah, that was that was. So there was a couple of formidable things in my youth. One of them was Waco because that went on for every, like for 40 days or something like that. We would, yeah. we would come home from school. I was in. I forget what grade. It was I was 93. In. Was it 93? Yeah. So I would have been in middle school. Sure, you've been. I would have been twelve. Okay, so yeah. I would have been in middle school almost. So I would come home every day, and here I am, like thirteen years old, and I want to come home and watch what's going on in Waco. And this is was, on the heels too of like Desert Storm, where like we're just bombarded with like all this, like all these news stories just being like shoved on our face too. Yeah, Not that's to go, like done that with our whole. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, we I grew up in America. So I was a bit younger then, so like I, <clears> I, I mean, I don't really, I, I didn't really know about it until like later on in life. Well, they say uh, like Gen X us is going to be the ones that save the world. <laughs> Because we don't this is care. the face that's going to save the world. Because <laughs> we don't Dan, care. Dan, Dan's going to. I am. He's going to try, but he'll pussy out at the end. Um, <laughs> see, I, I, mine was a little different because I didn't I, I didn't live in the country during all of this. So I didn't really know about any of it. Where the hell were you? It was in, in England? England. Yeah. Were you in Africa, too? Oh, for a little bit. Yeah. Soccer star. I'm going to Africa in July. Where are you going? I'm going to Kenya. Nice. Really? Yeah. yeah that, that episode right there. The, uh, the newest one. Uh, uh, episode 202 with Josh. I'm actually going with him. So we, yeah, I had, he, yeah, it's crazy. He has, a, he has a nonprofit that, uh, he's, are you filming it? Oh yeah. I'm doing four episodes. I already have four episodes lined up in after. Do you that. really? That's going to be great. When are you yeah. doing that? July, July 12th to the 24th or Let's so. Let's go. You want to go? We can't invite ourselves on people's <laughs> fucking business trips. Like, you know what I mean? We already hijacked his uh, business here. Yeah, yeah. yeah pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. It, unless they say, Might yes. as well double down. Yeah. Um, uh, Ushu has invited me to Africa like multiple times now. I wouldn't go to his part of Africa. Well, they're having a big monkey pox outbreak right now, which I just read today. <laughs> oh, good. In I don't Africa? know what that means. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. Um, all right we're, we're, don't, don't talk about you. You're making me nervous now. Let's, let's skip the Africa. <laughs> nah, that's all right. Um, oh, you're going to be great. Yeah. So what, what made you say, oh, I just want to talk to people. Like my Did po- you already, podcast. did you always do that? The podcast? Yeah. No. It just, I just randomly started it. But what, what, what was, why, why would you do that? Because I'm an idiot. You're not an idiot. <laughs> no. Um, so, so the, the way on the stack started, uh, it started in 2019 and at my family business where I used to work, work and printing there, you know, we have pallets of paper, right? You and my friend, I'm Maria Trano. Oh yeah. yeah Maria. Yeah. I love Maria. I've known yeah. Maria. I've known her for like She's 12 years. She's the best. She is the best. She's awesome sauce. Yeah. Yeah. She's great. But yeah. So in 2019, I, one day that, you know, try to make it long story short, I just, one day just took a picture of myself sitting on a pallet of paper and I was just, it was just kind of goofy. I was just like, you know, it was like a cheesy self promo kind of behind the scenes. I was like, you know, in an industrial warehouse manufacturing type look, probably never really posted any type of social media content, like with that type of scenery background before, just cause mm-hmm. it's like, it's not the nice because it's, a, it's manufacturing. Right. And, yeah. and I'm always thinking like, Oh, like nobody wants to see like down and dirty shit, but clearly people, it was clearly interesting, they right? do. So I posted that one picture of myself and, uh, you know, I posted on a couple platforms and people thought I was like, cool. And uh, one of my old managers, uh, Mark Harris, shout out to Mark. Uh, he DM me and was like, and this is where the num- name comes from. And I'll, I'll, I'll give him credit forever. Right. He this is what he said. He goes, yo, let me come jump on Dem Stacks with you on Dem Stacks. Exact words. <laughs> yep. And so that's where the name came from. And I took Dem Stacks and I turned into on the stacks. <laughs> so he was like he was like one of the first people. And I'm like, wait, I'm like, you want to do what? He's like, yeah. He goes, I just want to come sit on, sit on the stacks. And I'm like, well, I'm like, I didn't understand why. Yeah. Like, and he was just like, I don't know. He's like, it, it just looks cool. He's like, I haven't seen you in a while. I used to work with him at a previous job. 
previously he was my sales manager at another job. So um, I'm like, yeah, sure, man. And he's like, all right, yeah. He's like, let's do it. He goes, take a quick picture. He goes, I'd love to see your, your plant. And uh, he goes, then I'll, well, let's go out for lunch. I'll buy you lunch. I'm like, all right, yeah, cool, whatever. So he comes in, just took a picture of me and him, sitting on a pallet of paper, posted on social media. Then other people started asking. Like, can I come, can I come do that? And I'm like, do what? And people are like, can I come get my, but like, I don't know why. Like, I'm, it's, not, it's not like I, it's not like it went viral. It's not like I was, it's not like I'm famous or anything. It was just, I don't know, but it did get a lot of traction. Like there was a lot of people commenting and all that and all that. And this, again, this is back in 2019. So I, I just started telling people, yes, <laughs> I don't know. I guess it's just like my PR marketing mind. Yeah. Which is how I, I work. Right. So I'm, you know, subconsciously or, you know. Part of it's like selfish, like, oh, okay, well, hey, this is a good way pr- promo for me, me just putting, you know, somebody else out there and just giving them a platform, really, even though there wasn't, there was no audio, there was no video, it was just photos. So I did that for a whole year. You literally took pictures of people on the stacks for a year before a whole year. talking to anyone. Yes. A whole year. Once a week for a whole year. <laughs> And you were just posting it to your social media. Yeah. Yeah. I was, it was just like Facebook and there wasn't, I didn't even have like a page for it yet. Like I was, I started, I developed the hashtag on like hashtag on the stacks. That's where, I, and the reason, the reason it has a hashtag in it is because anytime I posted a photo that had anything to do with it, I post that hashtag. So if anyone ever searched that hashtag on any platform or clicked on it, you'll find every single piece of content that ever exists from the very beginning. Yeah, okay. Right? So that was my, that was my theory. Right. So uh, yeah, I told everyone, yes. I, I, you know, obviously I had, I had more than enough people lined up for a whole year. I just made a list in my Was you one a week. Yeah. Just one a week, just one a week, have someone come in, take some photos. Uh, and then it got to the point where people on social media were like, yo, like we need to, we want to hear more from these people. Like you're having like these, some of these people are like really interesting. Cause I would just post like a, like a, a short blurb, like three sentences, like, yo, this is Mark, Mark Denenbaum. He does blah, 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 blah. Yeah. You know, just th- like just quick little blurb about who you are and what you do. And obviously people other, you know, anyone and everyone kind of saw it as like a marketing opportunity for themselves. Sure. So yeah, cool. Like you think it's cool. I think it's cool. Like, yeah, let's roll with it. Right. So did that for a whole year. And then once people were like, yo, uh, how do, you know, like, how do we hear more from these people? And I'm like, I don't know. And somebody's like, yo, start a, po- start a podcast. And I'm like, I don't know anything about that. And, someone, and somebody's like, yo, start a YouTube channel. I'm like, listen, I don't, I don't have the budget to invest in video equipment. I don't know anything about that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Nothing. Zero. I don't even know anything about podcasting alone, let alone start, you know, put something on video on a YouTube channel. And uh, so then I was just like, you know what? I, maybe I can start a podcast. I just decided one day. I knew nothing. I didn't even look it up. And I think I think the reason everybody always asks me like, why do you think it was? Why do you think it was so successful from the start? Well, two reasons. Number one, I already built the brand for a year. Sure. Number mm-hmm. one, so I already had this head start. Plus, I had I already had another fifty guests lined up for the whole year for the podcast to begin with from day one because I was I already had a list of people that wanted to come just on the stacks, right? Right. So uh, I didn't even look it up. I just went on on Amazon. I bought six hundred dollars worth of equipment. And uh, posted it like on social media, like, hey, I'm going to turn on the stacks into a podcast. Who wants to be a guest? <laughs> and then guess what? There are 50 people. And uh, so then I had, there was a grad student at Misericordia at the time. We kind of sort of just knew each other, I think, through social media. We may have met once in person. I'm not really sure. Shout out to Mike Gombita. I called him the Mike man. He was uh, the, uh, your version of Dan. And uh, so There's no Mo- one's handsome. Dan. <laughs> 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 That's good. Yeah. It was good. Yeah. But yeah so, <laughs> so Mike, Mike DMs me and he's like, Hey, he's like, I see you're starting, I see you're starting a podcast. He's like, if he goes, do you need someone to help edit it? And I'm like, honestly, yeah, I do. I'm like, I literally didn't even think about that. I'm like, I just bought yeah. the equipment. And I was like, I didn't even know what I, what I was going to do, how I was going to start, where I was going to start. And he's like, he goes, I'll, he goes, I'll, I'll help you. I'll do the first, uh, like 20 or 25 for free. And he goes, and then we could talk about a rate after that, if you like whatever, and I can stay on. And of course I took him up on it. Right. Why wouldn't I? So, uh, yeah, that was it. I just started, I bought, bought some equipment. I built built a, a little makeshift studio in the printing company there and uh, just started recording. And then and then we, you know, we, I did just audio only for the first two years. It wasn't until episode 100, you know, which is like two year anniversary that I introduced video. What were you what were you trying to figure out? I have no idea. Like, wait, like, do you remember your first episode? Yeah, my, fir- my first episode. Yeah, it was um, was Chris and Steve Inesco from Blue Door Financial. They was were good. Yeah. Well, they ended up. They Wait, did end- you just score a goal? <laughs> Steve's my financial guy. Get the hell out of here! Yeah. So they they ended, they ended up um like after after the after oh, my yeah, first they, year they, they, they were a sponsor. They, yeah. Yeah. They're not anymore. And 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 you know shout out to them for supporting me for so they're long. They're dead to me. They're dead. <laughs> Don't use them. No, I'm kidding. No, they're they're great dudes. I'm still I'm personally good friends with them. Yeah. I've known them forever. I do. I, I mean, I I have life insurance through them. Um. But yeah, they were they were they 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 came on as a sponsor like after after year one. So, but they were my first guests. They loved it. And, uh, you know, so a whole year goes by, then they're like, yo, like, Hey, like, 
you know, if you're looking for, because I think at that point I was like, then I was starting to, I started monetizing, I think after like 25 episodes or something, I started monetizing because then I started, then I started having to pay more shit. Like the first 600 bucks, I was like, ah, I'll eat, I'll eat that. Whatever. Right. You know, but then now I got to start paying Mike man, <clears throat> you know, and, and then, you know, some other costs as I'm starting to build it and grow it. And uh, yeah, so they, they actually came out a sponsor. They were a sponsor, I think for like three years straight. They were, they were wow. sponsored Blue Door. So this Mike guy, he gets paid, huh? Well, he's not with me anymore. <laughs> oh, shit. I guess I screwed you know up. You guys take a lot of liberties <laughs> with this talking, man. <laughs> you know what? Speaking privileges revoked. No. Wait, you guys are getting paid for this? <laughs> <laughs> no, we just, we pay. Sometimes laughter is the best payment. Yeah. Yeah. It is. It is. Yeah. But guys, I brought, Dan, I brought you, I brought you a can. And a hat and a t-shirt. That's right. That's I how did. I get paid. Through yeah, he, he did get the hat. Why are you wearing the hat? I'm wearing the t-shirt. Yeah, I, well, you had it no, on. You, you actually hat. can't see Why'd the hat. Why'd you take but... it off, Dan? No. Dan, you have to uh, you have to forfeit the hat since you weren't wearing it. Yep, pretty disappointed. And I'm trying actually. not to talk so he doesn't have to switch. <laughs> no, okay. stay on you. I want you to put the hat on. Yeah, well, put, on. put the, yeah, get it off me. I can see me. Put, oh, there you go. Put that hat on. I've never seen somebody struggle so much to put on a hat. It's, it's, it's not, it's, dude. What are you doing? I forgot to bring the instructions, guys. I'm sorry. Hats. Take your time. I will. You got Look at this. Time. Is this our YouTube video? How to put on a hat? There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Brought to you by Unstax. Yeah. Mm. All right. Could you could you go any slower? Looks great, Dan. Are we getting? Are we billing for this advertising? <laughs> <laughs> are we sponsored by On the Stack? That right Wouldn't now? that be the weirdest meta? I'm going to be hilarious. <laughs> yeah. No, not gonna lie, I've actually inquired to advertise about my show on other podcasts before. I'd yeah. happily do it. Would you? I, yeah, I, I would. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm an idiot. I'm like, you don't need to pay me. I just I I, I so, look. Man, <laughs> I love yeah. I love. I love what you're doing. Yeah, I love you. I love what everyone's trying and likewise, to do. And likewise, man. I, mean, I think yeah. I think that uh you know, I've always I've always felt it about this area is that like a lot of a lot of really good art comes from places that are for lack of a better word uh down on its luck. And I think it gives you a lot of perspective to human human beings and human behavior and empathy. And I have I love the fact that like, like I don't look at anybody in this world or this sphere as competition. You know, I, I think you're the success that you're having is awesome. I think we're all jealous of it. Um, but that doesn't mean anything to me because your success is absolutely awesome and, and you deserve it because, you know, you threw it in. We were just a bunch of goof asses who were just like, <laughs> you got time Friday at five. Like, yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. that's, that's, yeah. that's what we do. I mean, we'd love to, you know, have some, you know, but, the stuff that we talk about, a lot of times people are like, what? did you ever get any shit on guests or content or anything uh, from a sponsor? I mean, I mean, nothing, nothing real major. Nothing I don't think really <clears throat> worth noting, you know. But did a sponsor ever have a criticism? Mm, no, I don't think so. But I mean, but, but I have had some sponsors that maybe haven't renewed, but maybe, maybe for that reason, maybe not. Maybe they did tell me, maybe they didn't. But I'll say like over time, my content has become... You know, at first it, it wasn't like vulgar or explicit, right? Like probably maybe within the first like year or so. And then just the content evolved. Was, I, you know, I didn't know what the hell Ours I was, was always vulgar, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. From day one, we were. <laughs> yeah. From day one. It yeah. Was, yeah. I, we're actually less vulgar now. Yeah. We've actually toned it down yeah. like a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. that was it's how we talked when we were yeah, kids. It's normal. Yeah. 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 And it's like, I think, I think people, I think people can recognize people being genuine. Mm-hmm. And I think that if you if if you're bullshitting them, their radar is oh hundred percent, dude, hundred yep. percent. And I I feel like I'm I'm a good judge of that too. Like I could like see right through a lot of that stuff too. Yeah. Um. But I, I don't think I answered your question before. Like I think you said something like like why'd you do it or what, what was the that's what, what was it? Welcome so, to the tangents. <laughs> I know. Yeah. So, but it it's been festering in the back of my head this whole time. But so like part of it, I didn't realize. I don't think I realized it up until I don't know how long ago. But at some point, I finally like said to myself. I was subconsciously building myself a business slash new career while I was still working for my family business, not realizing that I didn't want to do that anymore. But maybe I did realize I didn't want to do that anymore, the family business. And Mm -hmm. and but so I was I think I was subconsciously building something so that I would have a a job if I was like, all right, I don't want to leave here. I can never work for someone else. Like, I already know that, like. You know, I worked, you know, previous working for my family business, I worked, you know, in corporate America, not long, hated it. Then I went to the family business, right? Did that for, you know, 12 years and five years of it. Actually, I was building OTS on nights and weekends. Uh, But I think subconsciously I was building myself a new job. Do you think the mushrooms told you you were right? (laughs) 
Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> Can you tell me about your first experience? It, I mean, it was it, it was very minimal. I'll say it was minimal, but like, um, it was I, it really didn't have much to do with that. I mean, because it, it, this actually wasn't long ago. I'm just a big fan of them. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. No, it's all good. Yeah, but uh, I, I talked. I think I talked about a little bit on my my episode 200 on my show, but. Uh, but yeah, I mean like it, it, like one of the things I think that showed me, and I, I told you right before we started, I know you're, you're sober, you don't drink alcohol anymore, yeah. but one of the things like it, it told me or showed me was, was alcohol. Mm-hmm. And at the time I didn't really think much of it. I think I kind of sort of knew like, mm, I should probably pay attention to that. But as, as we all do, we're like, eh, but do I, do I pay attention to it? Like, yeah. what does it really mean? You know what I mean? Cause obviously it, it's going to tell you things, you know, that you need to work on and it, it, it's not going to tell you to do something while we're there. It just, it just shows you a sign. Right. And I think, I think it did show me a sign to quit drinking and I didn't. And I think partly that's kind of why I had the AFib. Really? P- part of it. I don't want to say all of the reason. I don't want to say that. You the, think there was some oh. sort of psychosomatic element to it? Oh yeah. Really? Yeah. I, I mean, like I said, I don't think the alcohol played 100% role in my AFib. Do I think it was part of it? Probably. I think it was a mix of a lot of things. I've been under extreme stress for the last, you know, year or more, but like even more extreme the last year, just all the ups and downs in my life. Yeah. Um, but, you know, alcohol probably. Yeah. I mean, alcohol is actually the number one contributor to AFib. It is. It's actually the number one trigger. I think I and I know you don't agree with me and I don't know if Dan, I, I, just, I don't know what you're going to say. I don't. <laughs> I, I just I, I would love the world where everyone just stopped drinking and would do the other like everything that was everything else. I think. drink can. Sure. Yeah. I mean, it's THC and CBD. Yeah. So it kind of levels out. That's the point. That's what I just, I just find alcohol. Like it was in, and, and, and I would have never, I would have never seen it until I got out of it. Cause when I stopped drinking, it was a Tuesday and I, I said, I don't, I don't know what Wednesday I can't Wednesday's too up in the air. I, if I'm not going to drink, what the fuck am I going to do? Yeah. You know? And it was just like that fear of like, what does it mean? Are your friends going to think that you're, you know, a homo and, you, and you're weak and all that stuff. And I, I, to be totally honest with you, I got real lucky, man. I, I, when I quit drinking, all the hardcore alcoholics that I knew were jealous. They're like, man, I want to get sober. You know, I'm like, you can. Like, I, I was in a bar the next night just to make sure that I could and not drink. Mm. But I was drinking every day and doing cocaine to stay up all night so I can keep drinking. It's and a then, bit much. Well, you know, and in the moment, it's fun as fuck. Yeah, you're like, oh, you I'm know, good. and then the next day you wake up and you are an AFib, <laughs> and you're like, you know what I need? I need Otter Pop margaritas right now, and <laughs> and that's how I need to get out of this AFib. By the way, that's yeah. a real thing. Yeah, did you really, create that? The Otter Pop margarita. Yeah, yeah. I was I was drunk in a pool in L.A. and somebody had I ran out of ice and people had Otter Pops. So that's <laughs> but it's delicious. Otter Pop margaritas change your life. Mm, yeah. Um. Yeah. I think. I think there's a lot of pain in the world, and I don't think alcohol helps. No, I think it makes it worse. I agree 100%. Yeah. I think, I, you know, you really don't see a lot of people fighting in bars when they're smoking, when they're drinking can. No. You know, and you don't see a lot of fights at the football games when people are drinking stuff like can. So, like, just from a 35,000 foot view, it's like, why do we do this? Yeah, exactly. Why do we drink? Yeah. Like, why is that a thing? Why, why are these horses telling me to drink? Seriously. That's my Clyde still. They're so <laughs> beautiful and graceful. <laughs> it's it so large. It took me a second. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank You're welcome. you, buddy. That like, was a good man, one. Every Super yeah. Bowl, I'm like, man, I really want yeah. a, I really want a nice cool Budweiser because these fucking horses <laughs> who are yes. who are yes. who are kneeling in front of New York City <laughs> after 9-11 making me go yeah. like now I really want a beer. Um what what was the things at the beginning that you found the most difficult with with talking to people, or was it just easy? Like you just uh, fell into it because like Micah doesn't listen to the episodes. Dan told me he's like, you have to. You have to listen to your episodes because you can see where you make mistakes. You can see. Yeah. Where people You're only going to get better if you. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. And is, is that why I'm terrible? Yes. 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 <laughs> <laughs> or is it because I'm constantly drinking on the show? You can keep drinking, man. It's poison, but go for it. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. I'd rather you drink out of the bottle with no rocks glasses yeah. or anything. That'll yeah, drink do it like it? a man. Yeah. Do yeah. it. Do it. Do you yeah. want the Alex Jones? No. Bourbon? Okay. No. <laughs> No, no. I but that's behave. like, it's hard for people to talk to people, especially <laughs> yeah. with new people. Yeah. Like, do you know, did you know all these people or were they? So, um, so, some of them. Yeah. Like, so yes and no. Um, and, and we, when you said like, you know, like, how was it? Like, what did I struggle with? I mean, obviously just doing this in general for the first time. I mean, I, I'll say I, I'm, I'm a people person. I've always been. I worked in I worked, salesman. Yeah. I worked in sales. Yeah. So like for me, like just having a conversation with anyone and everyone isn't really out of the norm. 
you know, I'm as a salesperson, I'm walking into places like literally striking up a conversation, trying to get my mm -hmm. foot in the door, like literally, right. you know, so like, you know, me having to talk to anyone, a stranger, it, it, was, it was nothing really for me. But obviously when you're on a mic and you got to actually hold a hold a conversation, because I think people don't realize actually how hard it is to hold a conversation behind a mic like right. this and actually engage and actually listen and make it interesting too. like there it's it's, you know. Everybody wants a podcast, you know, obviously. It right? seems like, lately, yes. Yes. Yeah, 100%. Um, we were there early. We were. Yeah. I have the proof. <laughs> OGs. It's in my OGs. video. We are the OGs. You are an OG. Yeah, if you, if you stay until the end of the show, I'll show you the clip. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. shit. I have, I have dated material from Facebook. Perfect. <laughs> oh, when you guys first started with Wait, you seriously have ep you have like episodes? Well, no, but here, I'll just show you real quick over Like, here. fuck Bill right now. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> fuck me. Yeah, don't tell us your Let's sweet Let's talk story. more about Dan. What is this? That's from like when we were first doing it. Back home podcast tomorrow. Guilty pleasure songs from the anti podcast. Is there video? Oh, there is. Is there audio? There might be. Let's see what happens, guys. From our episodes. Here we go. Oh, no, this is my this is my promo I made. Oh, your voice. How do you? Hey guys. Oh, Dan's doing great. <laughs> what is this? Is feeling alone. Erase this. Yeah, that didn't happen. <laughs> he tried. We taught. We we literally. Shyla is. Um, well, we were just talking about nonsense at the beginning. Like we played with like what's your favorite guilty pleasure songs and like what was it? You and I both had Party in the USA. But yeah, Miley Party Cyrus. in the USA was both our number one. Yeah. yeah, they were both our number ones. But we just wanted to talk shit. Like Shyla's a, a, a an emotional train wreck when it comes to relationships. Dan's like he'll never go into AFib, man. Like he's just he's just like <laughs> he's just even keel. He's just even mm -hmm. keeled, and I'm a wreck, you know. So it was just fun to have that. I wish you had episodes. I wish I did too. We might be able to find them. I on thought the you were going to show us video. Or you had them like the Apple, like uh, that's where you used to save them, like the Apple thing. Something I don't remember. So I mean, I don't know. All right, yeah. back to you because anyway. Dan distracted us. All right. Fuck Dan now. Talking, <laughs> talking. It's. It, I find a lot of people. Okay, so everybody wants to start a podcast, but yeah. then when they do, like well, this is my joke. You want to hear? It? Yes. Love everybody it. wants a podcast until they have a podcast. <laughs> it's kind of true. It's true. It's kind of true. It's it's true. Like, I mean, I guess maybe a little bit different for like guys like us because like, we're, you know, we, well, kind of enjoy it. Right. But like, <laughs> <laughs> I would do this every day if I could. Yeah. That's yeah, what I mean. Dan, but, Dan but would I think love to do there's, this. I think there's certain people that like, they just think that it's easy. And one of my friends said to me, and this was like a while after, you know, I was, I was doing it for a while. She said to me, <clears throat> you like that one? Yeah. The ginger, good. I, the ginger I, I just had that one. Grass. Yeah, I just Ooh. had that one the other day for the first time. Okay. I'm very good. good. Very okay. Good. She said to me, <clears throat> uh, she goes, you make it look easy. And I never thought about that until somebody said that to me because everybody sees the content. Right. And everybody's like, oh, I could if Bill could do it. I could do it. Right. And hey, I'm glad I, I'm glad I'm giving people that like inspiration or motivation, yeah. whatever it is. And I think a lot of people don't realize that 90 percent of the work is done before the recording and after like you know, and after Every, like this, this right here sitting here, as you guys know, this is the easiest part. This is only 10 percent of the job of like this episode. Everything comes before this and everything comes after this, you know, pre-production, post-production. Oh, the we kind of right? treat it like 90 I was going to say, we, I, <laughs> totally like we put so much time in like before and after. Like it's, it's a fucking burden sometimes. Are you kidding? Yes. You better be kidding. Okay. <laughs> 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 but like showing up and like doing this is like easy. You know what I mean? At least like for and me. Now like, it is. You know now I mean? it is. But I think people. It is for me because I don't do anything else other than this. Okay. Yeah. So, but like me, the, the the only thing that I've never done with my show was actual edit. I've never edited a single audio file or I've never edited a single video file. I never have. But have you said, I'd like to cut it here? And yeah, I, yeah. I, but I, but I, but yes. So I, but I still produce the whole thing. Yeah. Um, there's hardly anything ever cut out of any of my episodes, by the way. So like if anyone's listening like, oh my God, they probably cut something. Like literally almost every single episode that I've ever done from start to beginning, the way you hear it is almost exactly the way that was was uh was recorded like i hardly cut anything out but like the, like trailers and stuff like that like i pick all the trailers like you know we drop the like trailers the clips for the, the trailers clips. yeah yeah like you know i i <clears> like you know and from day one i i've I've, been, I've always been that involved you know all the writing you know like just just you know all that stuff all that all the behind the scenes stuff again it, it just except for the actual editing but like i used to like going back to like do you listen to your own episodes like i used to listen to the episode you know full through and god forbid if there were any mistakes i, I used i think i used to be a lot more harsh on myself 
you know, feeling like I was sounding stupid. I'm like, ah, maybe cut like this little part. You know what I mean? Just like I might have been like fumbling a question mm-hmm. and maybe used to cut out some of that stuff. But then I was like, you know, fuck it. First of all, I was just I'm like, I'm, I'm wasting my time, like trying to trying to make it perfect, you know, mm-hmm. and it's like, just let it be, you know, and uh, Mr. Rogers philosophy. It's yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I think when you get in too deep in those weeds, though, too, you start taking out like the natural feel yeah. of your conversation. Exactly. And then when you listen back to it, you could really hear it. Yes. And then you could you could start you could start then you can start to tell like oh like that's so edited yeah and then it's, it starts to sound but like you're talking, shit but you're talking about like a self edit right yeah yeah so you're like I'm I'm gonna is that what you're talking about like a self edit well it's like going back to the audio and listening to it and being like if you're like right now I keep saying like and like oh I want I want to cut some of that using filler down. words yeah and you start oh I'm just gonna take these out and take these out and just and, and then but it, when then you it, listen back to it, it sounds it's weird. not your natural voice pattern you're just like mm-hmm. something. You, yeah, you could you could yeah. tell it's, pr- it's, it's too it's too produced, produced not yeah. too, too produced. Yeah, yeah. And, I, yeah. And, and and like mine never got to that point. Like I never like really had like the ums and ahs or anything like that cut out. It would just be like if I just like really really blundered a question and I I, I felt like I would sound like an idiot. I would maybe cut some of that stuff, but otherwise like nothing. You know, unless like a guest was like, oh my god, I shouldn't have said. Like I one time had somebody on and he said something. He said something that was a matter of national security, and I actually <laughs> had to send. I actually had to send the episode like to his um, bosses. Yeah. To, he was in a, he was an underground bunker out in uh, North Dakota, I think. He he's a nuclear launch officer. Oh, that's a good get. Wait, yeah, you had to before the podcast. You had to send your questions. No, I had to send the whole episode afterwards. But, uh, yeah, they, they. Oh, yeah, yeah. To tell you what you were allowed to. Yeah, put to, out just there. to make sure that he didn't misspeak. So like that you could release it basically for what he said. Exactly. Okay, yeah. yeah. So he he had he did have to get permission before coming on. I hope the or CIA else, never finds or else, our Sam Fettis episode. Or, or else we're all going to jail. <laughs> or else China's a new fan of On the Stacks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The newest yeah. sponsor. Yeah. New sponsor. New CCP. New, no, no, the newest, the newest subscriber is Xi Jinping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This show's from, from good. TikTok too, yeah. by the way. Yeah. This yeah. show's cool. I like this show. Bill's gonna be uh, pitching like shrimp cola next week. Yeah, right. Yes. <laughs> yeah, is that Chinese lettering on the side? Yeah, you might have what? China, but we have North Korea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you like Central Bank? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I mean, like that that episode actually. I mean, and, and there wasn't really like a lot that had to be cut out, but he like again when I when when we you know he reached out to me. He's like, hey, Bill. He goes, I. He goes after after the episode. He goes, I I thought about some of the things I said, and he goes, I might have said some things I shouldn't have said. And to me, or if you heard them, or anyone heard them, mm-hmm. you would have thought nothing of it. Yeah, because you wouldn't know that they were codes we, exactly. for, you know, for launching a nuclear weapon. He said codes well, for launching. I, I, I mean, it's maybe some a, a protocol. It might have been a, pr- a oh, protocol. Right. OK, so like I, I sort Watch of it be the number from Spaceballs. <laughs> I sort of like asked him like the process, like how does it work? Like the president calls it in like he's the guy that turns the key underground. It's like like seven or eight stories below ground or whatever. That guy's the last line of defense mm-hmm. from a bad decision. Yeah. What the st- yeah? Can you imagine two the people? stress that guy's on? Yeah, it's him and another person. The other, and just like you, like you see, we mm-hmm. turn the keys. You know, same time, right? But uh, yeah, so I guess he he ended up saying something and whatever. And I didn't really know. Obviously, I I knew what it was because when I sent the episode, then they 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 you know when I heard back from him, he said, hey, they said, could you cut out this little ten second section or whatever? And whatever whatever it was, we just literally snipped it, and it all you couldn't even tell. You couldn't even tell. You, you literally, yeah, you, exactly. You could not even tell. Nobody would ever know. And if you ever listened to it, I mean, his name is Devin Redding. It was, this was back before I even did uh, video. It was just, this was just audio. Oh, only. It was just audio. So okay. it was a little easier to fix too, obviously, oh, okay. because of that. You know, there was no, like he was over here and then he's over, right, over right, here. Right, like, right, oh, right. What, what the hell yeah. happened? You know, yeah. yeah. Jump cut. But, um, but yeah, so uh, yeah, but other than that, like, it's just, it's just like been free flowing and yeah. What, have you had a bad guest yet? You don't have to say their name. I've had, so I've done 202. I've had like, uh, I've had a 201 bad guess. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> not what I expected. Yeah. yeah, no, no. No, I mean, honestly. And like, I don't mean like a bad guess. No, just a I guess mean, like, who's like, man, it's hard to get anything yeah, out the, of you. Yeah, of course there's been, you know? Um, and it's just, you know, I think once you put a camera or a mic in front of somebody, especially if they've never Sometimes done it before. clam up. Yeah, yeah. And like, you know, right before you come on, you're talking and you're like, you're getting the great, you're getting the greatest thing from them. And then mm-hmm. as soon as you hit record, it's like, yes, that's why we don't tell anybody. Yeah. It's like, what's your name? Yes. We just, <laughs> we just kind of go into it. We're chatting. We're we hanging start, out. We start which, rolling before which, you guys even know. Right. Like pretty just, much as yeah. soon as we sit down. And, I, and I've going. thought about doing that method too, but the only reason I don't is because actually like I have a couple sponsors like that, that I, I have to open the show with, you know, so like that's partly why. Do you know, pre-roll. But, pre-roll, man. Oh, no, I do. I do that too. Yeah, don't even do that. Just well, start your fucking show. I know, I know. I, I just, I take it, take it from the I, OGs, man. I know, I know, <laughs> oh, I know. Oh, believe me, my guys have been telling me this too forever. Like they bust me ass all the time. I, They're like, dude, just, just d- do it different. I'm just we, like, ah. we found really early on that you don't let them know when you're like, yeah, unless they, it's like somebody like so Sam Faddis from the CIA. Yeah, like that guy knows the game. Yep. Yeah, you know what I mean. So yeah, it's but like, as soon, but, but as soon as you tell somebody, okay, we're starting now. It's like, 
Oh, they freeze, man. Freeze up. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, a, it's like, it's, I hope you, I, hope you switched me on that when I did that. Yeah. Yeah. It, he was blown. <laughs> he's blown. I <laughs> forgot. It's a terrible joke. <laughs> we had, we had uh, a guest on once that was so bad that the next day we came back in here. No, that night. It no, was that we did night. it minutes later. <laughs> as soon as they left. We were like, we have to shoot another podcast to just the three of us. Oh my god! We, ha- we had to like get it out of our system. It was so bad. Really? And we had to kind of get that feel back well, for it. I think, I think me like there, there's times like where I would come. Like I always recorded them in the evening, right? Because because yeah. my day job, right? So like not I would anymore. All- not anymore. That's right. Yeah, yeah. I'm very very grateful for that now. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> but like I used I used to record them at five thirty at night. So I would leave. Well, I would leave because I was there until I got thrown out and bought my building. But um, so I. I would record the episodes right after work at 530. So like I would leave my house in the morning, seven o'clock, seven o'clock in the morning. And then I wouldn't get home till like nine o'clock at night on days that I was recording. So it was a really long days. And I, sure. and I did that for, yeah. I don't know, three years or four years or whatever. I don't even know. What, I've lost. I've lost track of time. But uh, but like, yeah, so like there's part of the reason me telling the stories, I would come home some from some episodes and my mm-hmm. wife would always be like, hey, how'd it go? Because, you know, obviously she knows I'm coming. You know, that was my nut late night. Right. I come home. She's like, oh, how'd it go? And I'd be like, oh, pfft. Oh man, it sucked. Like, I, I, mm-hmm. I would like, like, oh, like whether it was me or whether it was something I felt like the guests, like maybe, you know, wasn't, it just wasn't like, I was like, ah, oh, it wasn't that great. But then like, then once I heard it back, it's not as bad. Then it's not as bad. Isn't it weird? Dude, mm-hmm. dude. And, and you know, what's so funny. My wife would, every time I would come home and I'd be like, ah, oh, it wasn't that great. It wasn't what I expected it would be. Right. And she goes, she goes, Bill, you say this all the time. She goes, as soon as you go to listen to it, she goes, you're going to say the same thing you always do. Ah, oh, it was actually, it was actually pretty good. And 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 it, and it almost always was. Almost it's always weird was. how that is because I think freaking weird. Yeah, I think well because I think even so. Like, this isn't just me that this happens. No 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 no. Because no, no, no. wow. in the moment you get in your own head, you do. Because like, you, you come home, you're like shit, and you're trying to replay you it. You say back. something stupid, and you just can't get out of it. You just and you're, now you're, you're stuck, stuck in it because you're like shit. Hour. Why did I say yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever had one so bad that you just chose not to release it? Oh, here no. we fucking I go. Actually, I, haven't. <laughs> I haven't. No, I haven't yet. Okay. We'll yeah. tell you, we'll yeah. tell you about it afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. No, I can't wait. Yeah, we did one where we're like, oh no, this would be devastating. <laughs> like we yeah. can't. I can't imagine having to tell that person. Uh we we covered it well. Did you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We covered it well. Okay. No one knows. <laughs> but they know. Nope. <laughs> well, they were here and recorded, right? Yeah, yeah. Technical error, <laughs> technical difficulty. Yeah, technical. we lost yeah, the Dan, file. Dan forgot I su- to hit record. See, I uh, suck at things. I actually wasn't here that day, so they fucked it up because I wasn't here. Uh, and that's what happens when I'm not here. As we lose, that's files. why they need you. Exactly. Okay, it's I weird. It we appreciate you. It's, <laughs> it's weird you. when Dan. So this is here. why you get paid. Yes, eh. the big bucks. Yeah. <laughs> it's if if we could take sponsor money, I would pay you. Oh, I wouldn't take it. Um, it's weird though. Like when Dan's here, he fucks shit up. And when he's not here, he fucks shit up. So I don't really know. Like, <laughs> yeah, tomato, <laughs> tomato. Yeah, I make him right. laugh sometimes, so it's better it makes when I laugh here. all the time. Mm-hmm. He makes me laugh all the time. Um, how do you? Where? Like, did you pick? Let me try to phrase this. When you decided to do this, was there going to be like, a, like? A, like a discuss like how did you perceive like here's here's the things i want to talk about here's the people i want to talk to or is it just people that you just find interesting or you know because and then you know <clears throat> there's some people who you know try to like uh you know uh What's the word I'm looking for here? I don't know, but this question's going great. Yeah, it's he's, he's <laughs> let, 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 give, give him a break. He's trying to get it out there. Hold on, you Breathe. find it there. So, yeah. when you bring guests on, do you pre-plan the agenda for the show, or is it more free flow conversation? Not what I was with going an for. Interesting person that you just want to talk to. So, uh, to is answer, that it? To, was that it, Mark? No, but kind, close. kind of, sort of. <laughs> so, okay, so like my show, like I, I, I think now more than ever. It, uh, it's, it's just, it's obviously people I find interesting. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. It's people that have a crazy fucking story. Right. I try to like, not, not, listen, not everybody's gonna have a fucking crazy story. I get that. Do you know everybody's what I mean? Everybody's got a story. But everybody's got a story. Yeah. Some mm-hmm. are maybe are more interesting than others. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe some are more viral than others. Right. Not, not that I'm like, oh, I'm only gonna have on people if I think that it's gonna go viral. It's not that. Right. But like at the same time, I've done a couple hundred of these now. Like I kind of know, you know, I can kind of see things. I can, I can plan things before ever even knowing it's going to you know what i mean like i just know yeah, it's, like, it's like it's like a, it's like a uh like an intuition or yeah like a, you just, like a muscle you just memory know. you just know yeah right exactly yeah so i mean i think now nowadays more than ever it's just it's like it's interesting maybe if it's topical depending on what it is but all, my shows are also recorded like sometimes four to six weeks in advance so it's, sometimes it's hard to like time something to come out and i i you know especially if it's something that's like super tough because then like if news changes so much whatever it is mm-hmm. regardless 
if I record something four weeks in advance, the news can change so quick in four weeks that it's like, oh shit, then it's not even newsworthy at that time. Not that I'm telling the news, but you know what I'm saying? Like, um, so, you know, well, it's kind of weird talking about the Oscars in July. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, you know, I, I try to, I try to stay away from that as much as I could, but at the same time, if there is like a hot topic, I'll try to maybe capitalize on it a little bit, but not really much. But I mean, I think for the most part, the thing now is like all guests just refer other guests and like, I don't really have to do much legwork to get guests anymore, which is great. Um, and you know, was plus I, I have people reaching out a lot. And, uh, but then, like I said, like my best guests always come from previous guests referring the next person. So how do you vet that? Like, how do I vet them? Like, how do you vet? Like if, if you're getting a guest from a previous guest, mm. I'm assuming you're not, you're not really too familiar with the new guest. Sometimes, sometimes not. And yeah. Then, now, now, nowadays, uh, the, cause the I guest, can't tell you how many, like we won't be on your podcast. And I'm like, I fucking know you. I don't think that that's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like nowadays, um, I'm more so I, I don't know the people because <clears throat> you can only interview your friends and you know, people mm-hmm. around you that, you know, so much. Right. Like, and then just like, you know, well, you already, if, if you already had them on, it's like, you, you know, um, but I also, I found, this is really weird, interesting fact. I always found it was harder for me as a host to have a conversation with somebody that I knew the best. It was easier for me to say, there's nothing to discover, right? It was yeah. easier for me to sit across the room from the most famous, one of the most famous people in the world than somebody I knew best. I, I don't know what it is. I guess maybe it's partly because what you said, like, oh, like I, I already know everything about them. Yeah. And then I, then I feel like you're trying to like force something. Yeah. Whereas like you know, having on somebody that I don't know, I don't care what they do or whatever. Like it's, I'm genuinely discovering it like mm-hmm. in the moment. Of course right. I do some research beforehand to kind of touch on overrated, the question. overrated, do, 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 do a little bit, do a little bit of research. <laughs> his, his failures are my anxiety. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean like nowadays it's more so people that I don't really know, mm. maybe know of, um, but it's all like just when somebody introduces somebody, I'm just like, okay, like, yeah, like I, I usually don't say like, yes, right away. Unless I'm like, unless I kind of sort of know or, or, you know, but I'll just be like, okay, yeah, like, let me think about it. Like, and I'll, you know, I'll, I'll reach out to you or whatever. And, and then I'll send to whoever that was. Hey, like he intro to me that to that person. Right. But, uh, but otherwise like, uh, <laughs> this is kind of funny, but in, in the past, I still do it, but not as much anymore. But I, you know, whenever I would get requests, whether it was online DM or even just people around town, whatever, right. Like I actually created a form to fill out. And I made it obnoxiously hard. And the reason I made it obnoxiously hard and personal to fill out is because then I could tell how serious you are about if you're coming on my show for an advertisement for your business or if you're coming on to just have a good, genuine conversation with me. And guess what? Nine out of 10 times, it every single person that didn't fill it out clearly was coming on just for a free advertisement for their business because they didn't want to take the time to fill out the form nor did they feel comfortable answering some of the questions on the form. And I did that intentionally. What, what are some of the questions on the form? This is you blowing read my, my mind. Like, like, like what's, yeah. your big, what's your biggest regret? Like shit like that. Like who wants to answer that? What is your biggest regret, Marky? Oh, we could do a whole show about that. Yeah. <laughs> like things like that, you know? Like that I, I would have questions like, would you rather... Do you really want to know? Like, so hey, here's, here's a good one. Ready for this? <laughs> yeah. Here's a good one. Would you rather ride on a train, dance in the rain, or feel no pain? Say that again. Ride Would you tra- rather ride on a train, yeah. dance in the rain, or feel no pain? Train. Rain. My man. You answered it right. It's a CIA question. It was actually in a movie. I think. It's, yeah. What movie? I forget. I do really forget. I, I, I'm like, it, but it was, it was, it was a CIA movie. It's a, it was a question that they asked. Like, yeah. And, I, and, and there's the psychology behind it. So dance in the rain is like, you're just, you know, you can make anything work. Free flow. You'll just, you'll just, you just go with it. Like you'll, you know. Dance in the rain. Like we know the analogy. I don't need to explain it. I just thought it was beautiful. I'm like, I wanted, oh. I'd rather do that. Yeah. That's a great way to vet people. It is. It's, it's brilliant. So, yeah. what, so how do you have the audio that's set up through the website? It's a, Google, it's a Google form. Even if somebody inquires through my website, I'll just then send them the form back. Really? I'll say, hey, thanks for reaching out. Here, I kind of want to fill form. it out just for the fun of it. Good. I'll send it to you. <laughs> but you know what? Here's the crazy part. We could do it right I, here. By I, <laughs> like... Even though it was a deterrent to get people that either weren't serious. I got you better guests. It actually, 100%. dude, I, I literally would go through that sometimes. I'd look at 10. I'd be like, that guy, I'm dead serious. And depending on how they answered the questions. And if I, I could tell, yeah. especially now, like I could tell when somebody felt, I can tell if it's genuine. I can tell because again, I actually had one guy one time. He goes, I'm not comfortable filling that out. I said, okay, see ya. Well, 
I'm not comfortable filling out a question, but I'll he, talk to you he about literally, anything. He literally for two said hours. he goes. He said it's too personal. I said okay. Well then, I said do you, I'm not, then. What's no. the most personal question on there? I don't, I forget. I forget all of them. There's there's like twenty. What's your in theme? What's your? Uh, I think so, like, <laughs> social security number. Uh, you know the usual yeah. bank account info, all that stuff. Yeah. Um, social. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no. I. I What's I, your in theme? <laughs> God, Dan. I'll, I'm gonna add that one. Who actually, brought too. this? <laughs> thank you, thank you, Dan. Who I'm, brought you? <laughs> Where did you come from? I'm in a mood today, Check out man. The, you Check are. out the anti popcast. Uh, it's it's that it's that can that can that yeah. should be that should be the advertisement for can right right there. Can. What's your in scene? <laughs> <laughs> that is a great advertisement for them. <laughs> what do you it's think? It's a miracle we can't get sponsored. <laughs> you know, it's actually pretty easy. <laughs> We have no idea. It's actually very. I, mean, I have no I idea. Do. Just I'm post just on social media. I got my biggest sponsors by saying, "Does somebody want to sponsor that right there?" And I had somebody like one time be like, "How much?" And I just named a price. He goes, "Okay, I'll sign a two-year contract." A two-year contract. Mm -hmm. What sponsorships do you currently have available? Like, uh -huh. what do you mean available for his show? Yeah, for your show. On uh, okay. my show? Yeah. I don't know. Like, I, I could put something behind the wall, behind me. You know, Can hair and makeup placement. be sponsored by my business? Hair and makeup? Yeah. What do you mean? He's going to sponsor his fucking show. <laughs> Before he sponsors our fucking show. right, I had, look at look at all the spades I have over here, guys. I got yeah. I got the Indian yeah. flag. Everyone thinks everyone thinks the country of India is our sponsor <laughs> or North <laughs> Korea. This show, this show might be a little bit too controversial for me to sponsor. There he is. Um, oh, but so the yeah. owner is. <laughs> <laughs> what I mean, is this yeah. madness? It's yeah. easy, but it's hard. Like you know, yeah. what I mean, like it's it, it it's not it's it's. I guess also like some of these have come along with obviously with the traction, but like even earlier on, like I just like went would go to like talk to some people and be like, hey, like give me some feedback on this little pitch deck I had put together. And I wasn't like trying to sell them by any means. And literally two or three out of the like when I first get put together like a like a formal like little mm -hmm. deck and it was a piece of shit, which was why I want the feedback. Right. Right. I sent it to two or three people. At least two, if not, I can't. I'm trying to think who the other one was, but literally two or th or three out of three just became sponsors after I sent it to them. Like they, I, they, they're like, "Hey, here's here's my feedback. Change this, do that, don't do this, do whatever." And I'm in. And and they're like, "And we'll do the uh, the mid level, whatever it was. I forget at the time, right? They're just like, we'll do that for three months, or we'll do that for six months." And I'm just like. And that okay. so so what that pays for is that pays for like the digital production, the digital marketing production, yeah. Do you guys do you guys boost anything out? Yeah, well, yeah, a little bit here and there. Like anything you know, like the promos or yeah. like clips and shit like mm -hmm. that. Like you push those out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So do you find you get more traction coming to you from clips? Yes. Like in other words, like yes. I, I've I've talked to him about it. I'm like I said the majority of the people are not going to sit down and watch a two and a half hour right. You know, Clip, us, yeah, us talk about crazy shit mm -hmm. right clips. But I said the little clips. Who, the people who are interested might jump over mm -hmm. and or at least they're they're at least catching enough of your show. That like they're they're really they are consuming it even if they're only consuming like yeah. little bits and pieces on social media, like they're still consuming parts of it. And yeah, like, I posted and like a little clip last week and it, it was like twenty five hundred and I was like I didn't put anything behind it. I didn't. Yeah, I'm like, mm -hmm. well, we should do this more. <laughs> yeah, I own a production company. Like we should really do more clips. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I say the same thing about our, our show too. Like, shit, I need more <clears throat> clips, you know. But it's like, so you guys, um, how does how does it's Eric, right? How does he get in there, Eric? How did, how did he like come into the mix? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I went to full video. So, so he was your... He was, he, okay. Yeah, so he does all the production now. Are he, you guys he, all Black Magic or Sony? Nah, you don't nah. know what your cameras are? Uh, they're Sony cameras. Okay. We don't We don't have a switcher though. We don't, we don't. We do, it's so all, you edit He post. edits on the back he, end? He edits in post, but using okay. a using an AI. <clears throat> oh, because he's a... Oh, he throws it in Adobe and use the, uses the, the, uh, the podcast AI. Autopod. Yeah, so what you do is the individual clips and then it knows where the waveform is and it makes the edit there it does it in like 17 seconds yeah you can do it, like it, a two it can hour. take a two-hour episode and, and clip it like literally jump camera switching it's not it, how we it, did it, it do. here guys we did that it sounds like a terrible idea and i never sorry that. sorry dan um, <laughs> wait so yeah. you're saying we could get rid of dan pretty much no no no. so well we could you could the way the way the way <laughs> the way we used to do it was we would do this um these fucking guys would leave i'd take all the cards yeah. dump it i'd take all the audio dump it mix the audio line everything up and then i'd be here for like two and a half hours on two times speed mm. just doing the switching yeah he eric used to do it that way yeah and then he the atem was like 450 bucks you can get this thing and i'm yeah. like let's do that i actually bought that twice and returned it twice because you don't like it no because long story short but like at my at the new studio the building i'm in that, that we're in now um as we started growing and expanding and started you know doing some other shows and stuff i'm you know also thinking like all right we need to cut down 
the production time. How are we going to do that? So, all right, so Eric come in and run the switcher, right? You know, or somebody, whether it was him or not. That way somebody doesn't have, you know, Eric or somebody doesn't have to sit in post-production and do exactly what you just said, right? They just cut it in real time and then it's basically done. Obviously, you probably still have to go back and maybe adjust some things here or there, but you don't have to then sit through the whole thing. Like it's not as time consuming. I might cut it in half. I don't know, right? But still, time, right? I'm because again, now, you know, I got to the point where it's like, all right, this is not that it was never a real business. Like it, it, it was, and it's still in it. It has to be efficient. But it's like, it's like, we got to get more efficient. We got, always got to get more efficient, right? Um, you know, just as, as technology and everything evolves and uh, everything like that. But, um, <clears throat> I forget where the hell I was going with that. Autopod. Um, yeah, autopod. But yeah, so I mean. Efficiency. Efficiency. Business. Stuff. <laughs> Business stuff. Um, yeah. Yeah. See, I like. Can. Drink I like. Dot com. I like. <laughs> I like. Uh, autopod would be good for like something outside of this. Like yeah. of this. But like, it's nice to get like Dan to. Oh, yeah. Like pull it's shit up. It's and, interactive. Yeah. You know, just to. Just, un- unless we're. Well, the, the cool thing about this one is it records all the individual feeds. So you could technically right. use autopod, but yeah, but he's, you know, if he pulls up like we have this, he has a keynote, right? And that's what we use to like pull up clips or do mm-hmm. anything like that. And it's got the, I just, it's gonna It'll get hard to do that in post. Yeah. But Eric does a great job. Man. He does. And, and yeah, I cut, um, he shot a music video for university drive. Oh yeah. 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 And, uh, I edited it. Nice. So, and he's got a great eye. Mm-hmm. Everything he knows how to do is good. Yeah. You know, I, yeah. and I still have never met the dude. Oh my God. Crazy. Yeah. Makes me sad. Well, we got to have, we got to set Connect this up. Connect it. Make send it us a form. Maybe we could be on your show someday. Yeah. Well, I was, that was, people. I was going to, I was going to, yeah, I was going to, that was my next thing. You guys got to come on. Um, but yeah, but I also, I mean, I also do we have like, pot in there. <laughs> 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 we can drink can in there. All right. That's yeah. fine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I actually, the fridge is full actually. Oh, perfect. I literally just like this shipment like just came. The fridge is like full. So except, except my guys took like up half them today. Yeah, so. you knew that was going to happen. I know. I know. It's like, oh, what's it? Oh, I can take some of these. Uh, <laughs> what? Um, how does your wife feel about this? Oh, she loves it. Does she really? She's super supportive. I like. You got I a like, good lady, then, dude. I I say this all the time. I I just had this conversation this morning with somebody else. I forget who the hell it was. I literally just said this this morning because everybody says that to me a lot. Everybody always asks me about that. Everybody was always like, man, because well, like, everyone thinks this is like, oh, they're playing in their in their in their podcast room, right? And it's like, well, obviously, you can do something with it, sure, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, right, yeah. You can, you can actually make it make yeah. it something, like you know, make money. Um, but yeah, no, uh, like she's always been super supportive, but she also did, you know, again, like I know, I don't know if I said this before, we, I know we said it before we came on, but I don't know if I like, said it on air, but like I've been building this for years, knowing that this was going to be my career, you know, after Cork and Printing, like I knew it was a done deal. Like, uh, like again, a few years back, I told my dad, like, this is it. Like, I'm, I don't want to do the printing. Like, I want to go do that. So I've been building this for years on nights and weekends, you know, so my wife knew like there's, there's light at the end of the tunnel, meaning like back then I used to, you know, up until like a few months ago, I worked so much, but she knew like there, there's an end to it and then a new beginning. Right. Um, but and now, like, I have a little bit more re- normal recording times and things like that. And, uh, but it's just, you know, she's just so supportive of everything I do. Like, I like literally hit the jackpot. Like, cause everybody says to me, like, man, like, how did, how does, how, like, a couple of people sometimes, like, yeah, my wife's always bitching, bitching at this, bitching at that. Where are you at? Why are you not home? Blah, blah, blah. And I'm, and they're like, is your wife saying? I'm like, no, she doesn't say anything. Yeah, and, and they're like, they're like, they're like, why? And I'm like, why would she? <laughs> I'm like, I don't, but I'm just like, she's just so supportive. I mean, obviously that's the answer. Um, she loves you. She does. Yeah. Yeah. Many, many people don't get that. Dude, it's it's insane. I I wouldn't be sitting here today doing this if it wasn't for her. Literally. Do you, do you think part of the reason she's so supportive is because she almost sees the light come on in your eyes? Yeah. When, because you're doing yeah. this thing that you love? Yeah, probably. Yeah. But I think she also just believes in me and trusts in me so much. That she knows that whatever I'm going to do, it's going to work. Like it's just going to work. It's going to be successful. However you define success, and that's mm-hmm. that's very subjective. Whether you know whether you want to talk about money or not or just happiness, it doesn't matter, right? But I think she's, I think she just has so much trust in me that like it just do, it doesn't even matter. It just like there is no question. It's just like hey, I'm going to this, and even like with the Africa, like everybody asks like, is she going with you? I'm like, no, Eric's Eric's going. Um, but like they're if like, you need a B cam operator, let me know. <laughs> Flights are a little expensive. If you need hair and makeup, let me know. Okay, that's <laughs> yeah. right. All right. Yeah, yeah. 
If you need a useless person, let Dan. Know. I think I think we get an extra. <laughs> Sorry, Mike, I'm I th- going. I think we get, we get an extra carry on item or two, so maybe Dan maybe, will fit. Yeah, yeah. Whoever fits, whoever fits. Uh, but yeah, man, she's just so supportive. Like I literally say all the time, like I wouldn't be, what you know, if you want to call me successful, sure, right? I wouldn't be as successful as I am if it wasn't for her support. I just wouldn't be. Did you? Okay, let's get lovey. Yeah. When did you know that she's the one? Oh man, you put me on the spot here. Yeah, yeah. I, like, I was there know. was there a moment where you're like oh yeah yeah this is i made a right choice i mean obviously it was it was probably pretty early on like we've sure. been you know our anniversaries i don't know when this episode's gonna come out but our anniversary probably like, monday yeah okay cool yeah um so it'll be right after that but our anniversary is coming up in a couple weeks and somebody I, because i just had this conversation with somebody this morning somebody's like how long have you guys been together i said well this will be our six-year anniversary you know being married but 10 years uh together and um yeah i mean just i don't i don't want to sound cliche like oh i just knew from day one because that's Right. But, but I, I don't know. Like, I mean, it just, I just, we just had a connection, I guess, you know, literally from the day we met and well, the rest is history. I, I don't really, I don't really have much else to say just cause I guess it just, it just clicked. Where'd you guys meet? We just randomly met out actually at a bar, but she's not even from here. She's from Harrisburg. And we just met through a friend, a friend of mine, shout out to Matt Oganoski, um, big fan listener of my show guy. I didn't even know he listens to every episode religiously up until not long ago, but I, uh, uh, he was a, he was a little bit, a few years older than me, went to high school with him. And, uh, after college for him, he ended up moving to Harrisburg at some point for, for a job. And when he was living in Harrisburg, he met, he just randomly met her and her group of friends and became friends with her and her group of friends when they were down there in Harrisburg. And then it was his 30th birthday up here about you know, 10 years ago or so. Um, Sorry, he's almost 40. Happy 40th birthday, Ogo. Um, we're all 40 but, uh, here, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, um, <laughs> But yeah, we just, I just met, I met her through him. Like she came up for his, it was his 30th birthday weekend and he had a big party and we met there and that was it. Did you do the long distance thing for a little bit? We then, did. Yeah. Yeah. That's we did, not fun. Yeah. No, it's not. But that's like, a, that's like a real true test though too. Besides obviously mm-hmm. then living together, right? That's obviously a big true test. Like first living together. But, but, um, but yeah, yeah, we did, we did the long distance thing for God, I don't know, like a year and a half, it's two, like two years. It's year, like a 60, 90 something. minute drive. Two hours. Two hours. Yeah, Harrisburg. Harrisburg. From, Harris, from, two hours. Well, from uh, yeah, I mean, from where from where we used, we used to live in Exeter, we live in Mountaintop now, so it's it's actually like an hour and a half from Mountaintop. But from Exeter, where we used to live, it was a solid two hours. That fucking sucked. And what was when? Who moved in? Did she come up? She and move she, in with she you? moved. Yeah, yeah, she moved up here. Yeah, until she it wasn't until she found a job though. Like it was like, what did she do? Well, so she used to be a dental hygienist. Okay, uh, that's yep. a terrible job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're yeah. always looking down in the mouth. Yeah, it's terrible. It's like being a gynecologist. Thank you, Mike. I, I got it. Got it. <laughs> What'd you get? His joke. Oh, they're always looking. Da- I didn't get it. <laughs> it's okay. You keep All talking. Right, we'll, go, we'll, we'll go on. We'll tell you after the show. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. So, uh, but I was up, up until like uh, maybe like it was probably about two years ago. So yeah. she got burnt out from doing that because it's you know back. You're bent over in the chair. I mean, yeah. it's, just, yep. it's it's very draining on like the body and you know probably it takes a special too. person to do that. It does for sure. And she did it for a long time. Maybe like I, know, I, I forget. Forgive me, Jess. Maybe like ten years or something. But got burnt out. Then once we had our first our first son, first kid, um, she was like, I need more flexibility because she didn't have much flexibility, you know, with, with scheduling, you know, medical stuff like that. Like she had much flexibility. So she wanted more flexibility. So she uh, just, you know, started looking for a, like a, a work from home job still in the dental world, but uh, she ended up getting a job for a, a, a dental insurance company. So that's what she does now. She works for a dental insurance company and works from home hundred percent. So she gets to be there with the kids and everything. Well, they still go to daycare because you can't really work. That's where they with, get kennel cough. Mm-hmm, they do. <laughs> they come home with that bite, bark, whatever it's called. Do they have their bordadella? The what? <laughs> <laughs> Is that like a fucking puppy shot? Yeah. yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Um, so you, after 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 all these years, have have not only decided to take the the ivory path that was laid out for you. You smashed that road. Mm-hmm. You jumped off, mm-hmm. and you said, "Okay, I'm going to do my own my own thing." And not only that. I'm going to expand upon the thing that I'm doing. Tell me about these new shows. Cause if I, if I yeah. have it correctly, there's pizza talk leadership decoded. Who's pizza talk. <laughs> Maybe I'm wrong. All right. Well, Hey, we're, I guess we'll start that one tomorrow. Is pizza talk on. Well, there's, there's food fight. F- that's <laughs> what I, that, I wrote pizza that's talk. Not even, 
That's not even close. I wrote pizza talk instead of food fight. He does. He does. He does. There's obviously a lot of pizza involved. So I'll give you. I'll give you. Jim Jim was on the show the other day that does the NEPA pizza review. You know what? That's so. That's where you're all confused. Dan, (laughs) trademark it. We're doing pizza talk. Pizza talk. Yep. What a week podcast coming from Anti Podcast. So we're gonna go. We're gonna cross out pizza talk. (laughs) Yep. Because I was put in food fight. Type in food fight. Yeah, food, food fight food is fight. much food better. Fight, yep. So, what is the nature of that one? Is who you runs have on like who, chefs? Who hosts pizza? Who hosts? Who hosts Pizza Talk? <laughs> uh, pizza Talk is hosted by Brian DiMatte. <laughs> Brian, I am so sorry. Yeah. I wow. Yeah. I don't know why I well, saw. Consider yourself uninvited. Dude, no, 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 blame it on the camp. Blame it on the camp. I'll blame it on this right now. I looked at pe- food fight, saw pizza talk. Oh, wrote there pizza it is. Talk. That's there it what is. I did. Okay. There it is. Okay. Okay. So I'm still not right. Meatballs. Yeah. You should watch Meatballs and Cheese Steaks. <laughs> Meatballs. Um, Leadership yeah. Decoded is right, yep. right? Yep. Okay, somehow I you got back You had Food to- Fight. You had, you had it down there. You actually had it the whole time. Uh, this is before you, the- So you had it twice. Wow. Just, but, okay, but isn't there a third show? Uh, no, there's, only, there's only three shows. Me. Okay, that's why, yeah, that's why I, I got confused. What is Leadership Decoded? It's just all about leadership. So Dr. Will Ramey, he's a um, uh, uh, former military guy. Yep. And uh, just, you know, he's a- uh, corporate um leadership trainer right is so, he your jocko will link yeah pretty much all right good yeah good. You know, i have right. a very all close right. connection to him actually do you really I, I might try to fly out there to do a pod with you him should like, totally do me, that. Me, me not on his but him yeah. on mine yeah um but um yeah so he uh it's just it's just leadership right so it's it's, it's his real world experiences from his time in the military serving yeah. overseas uh and obviously you know he's he's run you know he's worked for top department of defense he's worked in leadership roles obviously his whole life uh, so it's just it's just it's 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 a solo pod. It's just him. Short episodes, like fifteen minutes average, uh, mm-hmm. and it's just all about leadership. You know, um, very very niche, right? Very specific. So it's just. So, so what is like your favorite? Like, I mean, hearing that, like for me, having guests on, my favorite thing to talk about is business and leadership. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just. I kind of nerd out over it. What is right, like? Why your- you guys are talking about this? I'm gonna go pee. Okay. Go ahead. What yeah. is your go to? Like your favorite type of guest? Your favorite thing to talk about? You know, that's a, that's a funny question that's because you know what, I, <laughs> I, I don't want to say like I have a favorite thing. Yeah. I just, I just like, like I said before, just interesting people with interesting, crazy stories. Mm-hmm. You know, like I just, mm-hmm. I genuinely like hearing somebody. I just like stories where people fucking are down in the dirt, dumps in the dirt yeah. and just make it the hell out and come back and say, fuck everybody. I'm back. I'm crushing it. And here I am. You well, know what I mean? Because that's kind of like, like for you, this transition of life. Yeah, well, it was kind of, it's kind of me. Year. Yeah, that that's kind of been like, you know, you know, in a sense, like, you know, it's not like there wasn't like any destruction. Like, you know what I mean? Like, right. But like, there were there there was definitely that a lot. Wave. There, but yeah, but it's just it's that crazy up and down. Mm-hmm. And like, I will say, the last year of my life, to be completely honest, I don't say it's been the worst of my life, but it's also been the best. Oh right? yeah. Like oh, I've, yeah. I've been at probably the, some of the lowest points I think I've ever been in my life. Mm-hmm. Even though you know I continue to put out episodes and. I continue to obviously because I'm so public facing, like Mm -hmm. I wasn't going to, you know, take all of my stuff and just make all my stuff sad and boring, whatever. Right. But like, but like, so I, uh, because a lot of people like once, once I finally put out, you know, my episode, episode 200, because I've never been on my own show before and I've never, I've been on like a couple other podcasts, but not much. And part of the reason like why I declined, you know, or or I didn't decline, I said like, I'll come on another time on this show, like way back when, 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 when we were first talking about me coming on. Yeah. Yeah. What happened with that hoity moment? Yeah. So the, 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 the the reason being is I didn't, I I didn't want to come on any show and I didn't want to leave. I didn't want to underperform, meaning I I wouldn't have been able to come on here and not be myself. Today, I'm 100% myself. Like unapologetically myself. Yeah. And that's how I want to. I didn't want to come on here and do you a disservice or your listeners because I would have came on here and I would have had like to. Like a caricature? Yeah. yeah. I would have had. kind I, of in a down at that time. I would have had to have um, lied about what, what my intentions are. Like, you know, because again, like when, 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 when we talked about me coming on, I was still at my, with the family business. I would have, I, not that I don't want to, not that I wouldn't have wanted to talk about that, but I didn't because I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have been able to tell you, oh, I'm quitting there and I'm going to do this. I wouldn't have been able to tell you that. And I didn't even want, I didn't want to come on and talk and, or on anybody's show. I've turned down so many, so many um, podcasts and that's why I'm now I'm, I'm back. I'm trying to get on all these ones that I just, I politely said, Hey, it's not the right time. I'll fall up you in a, in a few months or whenever, when I could, when I have more to share. Mm-hmm. Right. Cause I couldn't, I just couldn't share. Right. Um, and you know, so I, I didn't want to come on and, and, and be like half that guy. And then half this guy, I want to be 100% bill and 100% OTS. 
Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. Like that, I that, 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 that's like, so that's, that's what it <laughs> and was. And I appreciate mm-hmm. that. Yeah. I wouldn't want any, I, I, cause I've, you know, I've you had, I've, I've, I've had guests say that to me before too, not for the same reasoning, but just, I've had guests before where maybe they like half committed or said yes. But then like the next day was like, ah, Bill, you know what? It's just not the right time. Like, I'm just not a hundred percent. I've got something going on. Like, can we like, p- can we like follow up with me like in a month or two and let's do it. I'm like hundred percent. And like that, that's happened to me probably a few times or more in the last like couple hundred episodes. And it's not that many times, but it's happened. Right. And uh, like, I 100% get it. Cause I was that guy too, where I was, I was turning down all these opportunities to be on other shows because I didn't, I didn't want to not put my best foot forward. I, I just, it's just not me. Like I'm just, I really feel like I'm just genuine and authentic 100% of the time. And if I can't, if I can't feel like I, if I feel like I can't be that way, I'm just not going to show up. Do you, do you, feel, enough, like, do you feel like this is like the first time in your life where you can be like, oh, I, I feel 100% authentic? 100%. Right now. Liberating, yes. isn't it? It's the greatest feeling in the world. Like like the greatest feeling. The stress, the weight of the world literally has been lifted off my shoulders. Like, like I can't even explain it. It's like, I mean, for I guess maybe for anyone that's ever like quit their day job Mm-hmm. And gone after their dream. Not that this was like my dream. Like, cause again, this is only five years old. We're still a startup, right? Like this wasn't like my childhood dream. It wasn't like, um, you know, obviously podcasts didn't even exist, exist back then. Like it wasn't like, oh, I'm going to be a doctor. And that's my childhood dream. And I finally did it. Like, I didn't know. I didn't know what I wanted to do. Maybe up until a few years ago, once I started doing this, now I finally feel like, like, this is it. This is me. This is what I want to do. This is, I'm able to express myself in the way that I want to allow other people to express themselves the way they want to and just fucking have fun doing it and make, and make some money. And fr- did you, did you, did you change like whole friend groups and stuff like that? Oh my God. Yeah. So do you feel like you found your people? hundred percent. These are my people. This is it. Like, this is literally it. Like I've, I've lost friends over it because they would laugh at me. They would make fun of me in the earlier days. And plus again, like I, I really didn't tell many people like over the years that like, this is my intention because I really couldn't. Maybe I told some people, you know, that I trusted, but like, I didn't want, I couldn't let that get back, you know, to the business and then to the clients or to the employees, right? At the family business, because then it just, it looks bad. So like, I tried to obviously do my best with that. And well, it sure creates it an insecurity amongst everybody. They're like, what does this, what does this mean? You know, right. I, I want, do I, am I not going to have a job in two years? Because yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, but Phil wants to do his radio program. Right, yeah. His stupid podcast. Right. But yeah, but like going back to like when I said, you know, if, um, if anyone's ever left their day job to, and made that jump, that leap of faith, whatever it is to go, just go after whether it was your childhood dream to open a whatever store or to do this, it's that same feeling that you get. And I can't even explain it. Unfortunately, mine had to happen in the middle of me having an AFib incident. And then I just left my job very abruptly with the family business, which, you know, well, I was I didn't intend to do that, but it just, that's the way it worked out. And it had to, that's the way it had to work out. Like, it just, I believe everything happens a hundred percent, like for a reason, like no doubt. There's just, there's no doubt. Like, and again, like even since the AFib, like I had to re, I feel like I had to like redo my whole life. Like I like, it's like, like it was like, it like, was a reset. Yeah, but, you, but do you mean like your priorities? Everything, literally everything. Priorities, aka people in my life, family, um, every, you know, obviously finally get to say like, hey, I'm finally doing this now. Like I finally can tell people and be. I've always been so excited about it, but I could never talk about it. I couldn't talk about it for all these years. Like this was my plan. You were muzzled. I was, I was, I was, I literally said like, I've been handcuffed. My potential as a person, as a human being, as a creator, whatever you want to call me in this, in this thing, right? Like I've been, I've just been like handcuffed. Like I've been, I feel like I, I had this potential that I, I guess maybe I didn't know that I had until I started doing it. Right. And I think, you know, everybody always, everybody always asks like, Oh, like I never, I don't know what my passion is. I don't know how to find it. I don't, I don't know. What do I do? Where do I start? Oh, I see you doing this. Like, man, like, how do you do it? Like you talk about all these people, and all these people, how do they do it? I'm just like, they just do. That's it. Like you just got to start somewhere. And just like me, like five years ago, if I would have told you I would be sitting here today doing this, I mean, I, I would have said like, I would have been doing something in this aspect. I just didn't know really what, right? Like way back then I was like, okay, we have this podcast, but like, am I really gonna be able to make enough money off it? Like, I'm like, I don't know, but I'll, I'll figure out other ways to bring in revenue. You know what I mean? Um, but again, like it was, it was like, everybody always says like, how do you find your passion? How, how, like, how did you, like, how do you know what you want to do? Like, how do you find something that you truly love? And it's like, well, until you start trying, I think it's, I think it's, it's inside everybody. I really think it is. And it just has to be brought out of you. And I, I don't know what it is for a, any individual person, like what it's going to, what, what it is that's going to bring it out of you. But I think you just have to try different things. 
and not saying like the other thing, the other part to it, you know, is all the crazy shit that happened in my life, right? Like, like, like just the AFib incident, for example. Obviously, that was a huge turning point in my life where, you know, again, that was April 1st. I ended up, leave, you know, I came home a couple days later and then just ended up putting in, uh, well, unfortunately, no notice with my job. But I said, I, I'm resigning immediately. That's it. Like, I'm done. Like, I'm I'm moving on. Like but this, yeah, that went over well. <laughs> yeah, not 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 too good. I mean, good, but not too good, you know? Um but it just I, it for the first time in my life, I put myself first and my family and my kids because I had to. You know what I mean? Like I always felt like I, I couldn't even do that. I couldn't even do that before. Like I feel like like working for like my own family business. I felt like even the, even like even there. there even I had to choose own, this before them. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like it was and I didn't never I never really chose. You know, I know what you're saying. Own, but yeah. like but you know what I mean? Like it was just like I and again, I'm a super loyal person and I'm an all or nothing guy. I'm either, I'm either, I'm either in or I'm out. I'm never one foot in. It's not me. I just won't do it. So like if I'm doing something, I'm doing it and I'm doing it fucking right. So like I'll never commit to something and underperform. I just won't do it. Right. Like not, and I'm not, not afraid of failing. I just, that's just not me. You know? So like, again, like I was just so committed to that. Like it, just, it consumed my life. Right. And, um, but yeah, I just, I think for me, I never realized I, that I could do something like this and that I had this potential. And I think everybody does in some degree. Not, not saying that everybody has the potential to do this, but, but there's to something. do something. To do something. Like stop fucking complaining and just go do something. Everybody's just too lazy to fucking try. Everybody's too lazy to do the work and everybody's too impatient. Like I did this for five fucking years. Five years before I could even say like, okay, I think maybe I can leave my job now and do this. You know what I mean? Like could I have left a little sooner? Probably. But part of it was, you know, I don't want to say my dad talked me into staying. I was trying to do the right thing for my dad, for the family, for the name, the whole bit, right? Obviously, that ended a little shorter and a little more abrupt than what we had planned, but that's just the way it goes sometimes. It's 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 hard for dad sometimes to I think dads need to let their kids be who they are. And as long as you're not like a psycho and, you know, like, yeah. that was the thing for my dad. Yeah. Like, like I, I could have had that steel business and I, and I, and I was just, I was living in LA working on the number one show on TV and he was, you know, but then, you, you know, you look down the road and you're like, oh, maybe it would have been a better idea. Maybe I could have had a family, maybe I could, but mm. you know, or maybe psych- you would have been miserable. Maybe I would have been, yeah. you know, but yeah. my psychedelic people have told me I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. Yes. So yeah, I believe that. I'm believe not, that. I'm not against anything anymore. Yeah. And I think that I think that like your story, I don't don't take this the wrong way. I don't think it's unique. Um, but I was I, just I was just gonna say that like it's funny listening to you talk and to hear your story and what you've been through and where your life was, where you are now. And I just kind of keep like trying not to grin like an idiot because I, I like your story is my story. Like what you have gone through and what you are going through is. Like, I remember the day that I walked in, quit my job on the spot because an hour before I had signed all the paperwork on buying my first business and the elation of this is what I'm supposed to do. I never knew this was what I was supposed to do. It made no sense. And like, even like you're saying your friends making fun of you. Yeah. You think starting a podcast, your friends are going to laugh at you. Try buying a salon. I don't know anything about hair. I was selling soap and makeup. Micah sits down to pee. It's like, like, and I'm listening to you talk and I'm like, oh man, I, yeah, fond memories. You get it. They're fond memories because like, I remember those early days of like, this is what I was born to do. I I was born to own my own business. I was born to be entrepreneurial. I didn't really realize how, how much until I did it. And then to look at it five years later and be like, we made it. Yeah. And to hit that point of like, we actually did it. Yeah, we fucking did. Our it. life's a little bit better. Like, yeah, we don't have to worry about money as much as we used to. And you know, I'm happy. But you're also just happy. I think that's the big. Yeah. That's the bigger thing. Yeah, it's, I don't it's know. Nuts. Um, less. I don't know if it's happiness or less fear. Do you know what I mean? Because the fear of not being able to pay the bill, the fear of uh, yeah, I think I think that fear will always still exist, no matter what. You think? Yeah, unless you like you hit the freaking lottery or Elon Musk. You I'm know trying. I, mean? I'm, I'm, I, I don't know. I, I actually I, I mowed this morning. That's the only time I ever listen to a podcast is and I'll pick one. It's usually that isn't a, ours. Yeah. It's or, usually yeah, like or a, mine. a comedian. Yeah. Or it's, 
<laughs> what did you just give say? Give, the that, give me that shirt back. Yeah. Give me that shirt back. I 100% thought that's you That's why I have it. the hat. <laughs> Something else. And I put the shirt on so I could talk <laughs> shit and you can't have that. <laughs> but no, and they said, like, they were talking about what a success look like. You know, yeah. how much money. And yeah, like, well, how much do you need until you can say, like, oh, I'm yeah. successful now. And they said, you know you've made it. You know you're successful when you don't have to worry about the price of the food on the menu. You just order what you want. And I was like, that's a really cool way to look at it. It's not about how big your house is or how fancy your vehicle is or how many vacations you can go on or, you know, how much money you can spend on your hobbies. It's the simple things of I want to go have a meal with my friends and I'm not worried if I'm getting the $20 pasta or the $40 steak. What does it say about you when you're worried about the prices on the Taco Bell drive through? <laughs> You're you need in deep to, shit. You need, you need to listen to Bill. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, you need, need to follow your heart. You need to watch Pizza Talk more. <laughs> yeah. Watch Pizza Talk with Brian DiMatteo. Yeah. yeah. Pizza time. What is it? Pizza Talk. Pizza time. Yeah. Pizza o'clock. Okay. Got it. Yeah. But I think I think the other big thing too though is freedom. Yeah. I think yes. yes. I think that. Freedom. Okay. Yes. Maybe maybe you call it freedom. I call it lack of fear. It's. I okay. think it's the okay. same thing. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. Same thing. It's yeah. like I feel. I feel. I'm not worried about shirt. Yeah. Shirt right now. It's like yeah. freedom. Like it's just like I want to like. <laughs> You know, like next weekend, like we just de- we just decided a few days ago to just take five days and go to the beach. You and the wife? Yeah. And, the, and yeah. the kids and the Fuck kids. Yeah. Oh, you took the kids? We're taking the kids. <laughs> yeah. Brandon Bray was like, he, I don't know, maybe saw, it was something at daycare. He said he wanted to go to the beach. So he comes home, says he wants to go to the beach. Yeah. And we're like, OK. Like, and I was like, you know what? Let's let's do something. Like, I think is also too like for the last, you know, 12 years or so of my life working for the family business, I never really took many vacations. As a salesperson, it's hard to take a vacation because sure you're is. always kind of sort of working and it's so hard to turn all that off. And I, obviously, as a business owner, too, it's all, almost still impossible, too. So I get there. I was like, oh, well, we'll wait, wait to see what you're in for. It's probably gonna worse. Eh, not really. But like I just I felt guilty taking time off and I was like almost made to feel guilty taking time off. But now it's like I don't fucking answer to anybody but myself. Mm-hmm. And if I fuck something up, it's on me. If you I even die if, by if, your own decision. That's it. Yep. That's it. And that's it. Like, there's nothing else. Like, I didn't. I didn't have to request time off. Like, nothing. I have to worry about fucking paid vacation days or not. Because, well, you know, work for yourself. You don't get any, right? Like, yep. but but you also can do whatever you want, mm-hmm. right? And it's just come on, honey. We're going to the beach. It's a tax write off. <laughs> exactly. Yep, yep, exactly. Yep. Yeah. Business trip. Hundred yeah. percent. Here, talking yeah. to this recorder real yeah. quick. <laughs> as long as I bring, I'll, I'll bring them one microphone yeah. and a camera and yeah. say we recorded a podcast. Isn't the, the beach great? Yeah, I love it. All right, that's the show. Thanks for coming. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the show. That's it. It's a wrap. Yeah. Doing yeah. shorts over here. Yeah. <laughs> Do you uh, are you are you are you expanding beyond pizza talk? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we'd love to do more food pizza fight. talk. I'd love, shows. So I, I didn't watch Food Fighters. Yeah, Brian would love to come on your show too. But actually, Could, he, would he come? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he wants to come on here. He wants to. I think he wants to come on here too. If you want to have him, I would guest. love to have him. Yeah. On. Uh, See, that's what I'm saying. You're, I think I'd rather go on you're, his. You're, we you're, can eat. Well, that too. He could bring food here. So okay. So is the premise of the show we eat and talk shit? Um. Yeah, I guess. I mean, it's it's just it's, it's just, your show. It's, I don't know. Well, it's, it's, well, his show, kind of right, but like, um, it's it's food. Like, so he's so it's he, under the on the stacks umbrella. umbrella. It yeah. is, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so it's it's just all about food. So he just has on foodies, basically. Whether whether you're a, whether you're a food blogger, content creator like him, or whether you're a chef. Or whether you serve the restaurant industry in some sense, or whether you previously worked in the restaurant, seeing how fucking crazy it is, like it's oh, just, it's crazy, it's crazy. So it's just it's just anything and everything revolving around food and a little bit of fighting too. So he's a uh, he he does he does uh, MMA, mixed martial arts, at uh, Good Tree MMA. Wait a second, you're gonna eat a pizza and get kicked in the nuts? You or? might be careful. I kind of want to do the show. I don't think I, I, don't, I, I, I don't think they kick though. They'll just take you down, like choke you out. I so he do, does jujitsu. Jujitsu. I know a little yes. bit of jujitsu. Yeah. Okay. I don't I'll, know if I've told you this yet, but I've been doing Muay Thai for about six months. Have you? Okay. Have you done any, any done martial arts before this, or is this your first? Yeah. yeah. A little bit when you, I was younger. What'd you do? Karate. Me too. Boxing. Uh, yeah. It's karate. It's yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love it. It's, yeah. I love it because like it, it's humbling because you. Th- I know how to fight. But I, I had to learn a whole new style of fighting. Oh yeah. That's, and I yeah. went in the first day and I was so bad and I loved it. I loved having to learn something from scratch because at this point in life, like I'm comfortable. You know, I've had, you know, a, a moderate level of success on a small business level. And it's like, I want to go do something that's brand new. That's going to make me happy. Yeah, like you don't know shit. Suck. Yeah. And I came back after the first, like for the first night. And my wife was like, my wife was like, how was it? I was like, it was awful in the best way possible. And I loved it. I absolutely loved it. We should have him on. We'll have him come over to my house and we'll cook. There you go. Does he cook? Uh, I'll cook for him and he can. Maybe, yeah, it. I think so. I think so. He's not like, I want to say he's not like, a, like, like he doesn't. I don't think take pride in being like a cook. <laughs> I hope I'm not misspeaking, Brian. <laughs> I made you PB and J. Hope you like it. 
He do, he, he does very well at takeout pizza. <laughs> Who was who was nice. the guy who was the guy that sat down with you for the two hundredth episode? Ah, uh, jeez, who was that guy? Oh, oh, I thought you were just making a joke. I, I, no, I'm I, asking you. Oh no, I, I thought you meant like like what me, does he mean like to me. you? Oh, Jimmy. Yeah, Jimmy's one of the executive producers for my show, and and he does he does a little bit for some of the other shows too. Can I say Jimmy Martin? He's a he's he's a re- he's. I cut my grass and listened. He seems like a really good dude. He is. Like he, I I. Not to say, I've listened to you before, not to say I didn't connect, but as a new, he did a really good job. Yeah. He is. Very he's good, good job. He, yeah. He, 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 you know, he does have a lot of experience on camera. Um, he, he owns a, a fitness company called Burn. They're obviously, obviously, you know, one of my sponsors of my show, but, um, no, but yeah, he, like uh, lavish isn't <laughs> just throwing it out there. They could be. They could be. <laughs> There's potential. They could. <laughs> I'm not asking. 100%, you to do that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, he, uh, <clears throat> he actually was a, he was a guest. Him and I, n- we just knew of each other, our lives, but never actually met, um, until episode, he was episode 55. Jimmy was, uh, and I'll never forget it just because from that day forward, he, he, he became part of OTS in the background. A, l- a lot of people didn't really know he was helping in the background for a while. Um, but yeah, so episode fifty five, and that was yeah three years ago. So he's been he's been part of OTS really for three years, and has has really helped me advance the show, you know, to what it is today. So I hundred percent got to give him a shout out and credit for that, and, and the whole team too. I think I think that's the other thing. Everybody always thinks like because like some of these people, like obviously you know Eric, because you guys are a little bit more in tune to like really what's going on. I right? talked to like, Eric on a speakerphone, and plus you kind of yeah. know him, right? But yeah. like, but other than that, like I think a lot of people. Whether they're whether you're brand new to my show or whether you're um, or just not like I mean even people that aren't brand new to my show like you didn't really even know what Jimmy's relation was like you know again so it's even even some people that may have seen more than one episode ever you may not even realize sometimes so I always like to just I didn't know the extended universe of going back three fucking years yeah 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 mm-hmm. but I was like I I always like tell everybody because everybody always asks like how do you do all this like how does it all happen I'm like well it's not just me that's it right yeah. like. It's it's not you just surrounded me. yourself with some really surround, talented people, I, really good people. Hundred percent. I surround myself with good fucking people that know what they're doing, and we're all on the same mission. And yeah. shit gets done, and it's fucking dope. Are you going to expand from podcasts into other things? Yeah. Oh. Ooh. Is this what? one of those? Keep it quiet. Oh, oh no, 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 oh, okay. no, oh, okay. no, 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 no. We're here no. to talk. No, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Spill secrets. Yeah. No, I mean, we're just are you lo- about to make an exclusive uh, announcement here? I, I, on- I wish I could say. I wish okay. I could say that. Um, okay. No, I mean, besides, obviously, we're looking to add more shows. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, but then we also we also produce other content and show and other shows that aren't aren't OTS brand like other people's stuff. Yeah. 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 So like we we're you know we're look we're venturing into that. We're just venturing into other content. You know what I mean? And just doing it for other people besides the in-house shows. Yeah, we do a couple here. We do. I do a couple here. Okay. But yeah. uh, do you have issues with the sets? Oh, I need a bigger building. Yeah, because every show needs its own set. Yeah. That's the problem I'm running into. They keep yeah. making me lift the Kim Jong-un up. Yeah. Yeah, moving yeah, our statues and yeah. everything else. And, yeah, we and, move our and, statues. And, you know, and it's funny if, if, Jimmy's, if Jimmy and or Eric are listening, they're, they're going to laugh their ass off because they're like, Jimmy's always like, Bill, like you don't, it doesn't, you don't like, he's always in a good way, trying to get me to repurpose what we already have and not try to build everything, you know, custom, which, you know, just like you said, like you want to have different sets. Yeah. We do reuse, we are reusing one of them for a couple of the shows, but we make it look a little bit different with just with stuff on, you know, in the background. Right. But you know, we're, we're making do with the space that we have now until I can find another building for us to, to go to, um, you know, we're, again, we're going to make do with the space that we're in. I mean, it's, it's, it's super fucking tight, <laughs> but I mean, is it it, really, how many square feet is it? The whole building less than a thousand. You're doing all this, all these shows out of that. Wow. I, yeah. Uh, yeah. Invite me down one day so I can walk yeah. in and well, be come, like, come, look yeah. at this closet. <laughs> it is. It is. Shame. Yeah. It ba- I basically here, to put it in perspective, I have, there's, there's three rooms. How big is, is they're they're all the stacks room? My, my, it's mine, about the size? It, yeah. It's, it, mine's, a, mine's a, my uh, studio is a little uh, more narrow than this, but it's a little bit longer than this. Okay. And then, and then the Gives you good depth yeah, and then, and then, uh, the, we call it is the loop internet studio, which is our other one. Um, that's just one of the sponsors I just have a habit. That's how that just, works. It is. Yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. So loop internet studio, that one is, it's, um, it's probably a little bit wider than this and a little bit longer than this. And then the third room we have is like a green, you know, green room slash lounge. Uh, and that's it. That's all we got. So you only have two oh. podcast rooms? Two. Mm-hmm. Literally the two with team. We, we, we actually were all there today, this morning. <clears throat> and they're like, bro, like, we got to get rid of the lounge. I'm like, we can't get rid of this. Like, they're like, we need to make this into another room. And I'm just like, I'm like, I just can't, I can't part with the lounge. 
Because like we need the lounge. I mean, we need somewhere to sit besides like a podcast, besides a studio. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I don't know. I'm, I'm I'm half and half. I probably won't get rid of it. I'm just hoping I find another building that I can buy before. What's an average day there like? Is it like all the time or is it like, like recording? No, no, no. I mean, just like is is like is like is the crew there is like. Oh, no, like it's it's, mo- te- it's mostly Let's remote crew team. Uh, and they're mo- even though, even though they're all local guys, it's they're it's it's mostly all remote, you know, like you know, we, we, we do, you know, we'll probably see each other maybe like once or twice a week for you know a couple hours here and there at a time. Um, and, you know, if we're doing some like other on site stuff, because like we're 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 actually producing something right now um, that we haven't announced yet, but another like show type. Thing, but it's on site. It's not. It's not. Uh, and it's on site somewhere new every time. It's not. Um, oh, it's like a traveling show. Yeah. Okay. Right. And, and, and but you know, but just local. So again, it's it's, it's on site on set for everyone. Um, so again, so that we're going and we're setting up. You know, it's it's not really. It, it doesn't like. It's not like we're setting up podcast equipment. It's just like we're. Call, it's. I, I'm not even sure even what we're the way we're wording. It's like a mini series, like slash. Like they're just short. They're very short, like five minute video videos. That are like we're just we are sitting down talking, not me, right? But um, it's not like a long form podcast, and there's no mics per se. You know, it's just lab mics, and you know, you better not be trying to tackle the homeless. I'm not. Okay, good. Don't <laughs> I don't need I'll, I don't I'll, need homeless right. competition. Yeah, no, no, I won't. I'll, 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 <laughs> it's not a competition. I'll leave I'll, the homeless. It is. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll leave the homeless people to you. Oh man. Yeah. Um, but if you want, I can. We can come up and we can we can tag team the homeless. No. Let's rephrase that. <laughs> Good idea. That oh, sounded, that it's an OnlyFans. You're doing an OnlyFans. <laughs> yeah, I got that's, it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Spoiler alert. That's the big announcement. Yeah, that's that the only the way big. we're all going to make money yeah. around here. Yeah. <laughs> Take you your pants off. Well, you know what? I actually, I, I actually want to say some of that. And I, I, and, and, uh, I hope whoever emailed this to me is actually listening. Because oh, I'm going I'm I'm to tell the story right now. Let's do yes. it. I'm going I'm to tell it. it. Okay. I had somebody, don't know who, still don't, a few months back, I got a random email from a random fucking Gmail account can't look it up and try to look it up couldn't trace it right somebody emailed and said would you ever be interested in doing an episode with a sex worker and, okay and they i don't know if it was a male or female uh they they went on to say in their in their email that like you know in just in the last year we made thirty thousand dollars in in money and then another like forty thousand dollars in like perks or something which i didn't really understand but whatever Dan, uh, you want to fill us in on that? So it, what they do is they travel from town to town. <laughs> no, you, Dan so, doesn't. And if Dan knows, I'm terrified. Yeah. So um, <laughs> they're like, would you be interested in doing something, something like that with us? Doing a podcast. Yep. Do, yeah, okay. Like interviewing them, having them okay, on. They okay, said, they said okay. however, I'm not sure how the logistics would work because we don't want to reveal who we are. Because, Until they're on the podcast, but still not reveal. Think of it like remember, like back in the day, yeah, you back like women, like blurry is, face, yeah, yeah, like you know, like almost like a you know, like I, I forget what that <sighs> show was where they used to like blur people out, whatever. But um, uh, catch a predator, hard copy, something. I don't know, yeah. But I uh, so like they said that, and I was like, and they're like, you know, because of because it's NEPA and everybody knows everybody. Clearly, they would get noticed. They probably, yeah, whoever this is, probably actually does know who I, I actually know who they are, and but I don't mm-hmm. know who they are because I haven't figured it out, and maybe never will. Um, but I emailed back and I said, yeah, I said, I, I would, I would be, I would be okay with having you or you and somebody else on if there's more than one person and, um, to talk about it. Um, but I said, however, I said, it has to, number one, it has to be done in person. I said, we'll figure out a way. I said, we can sign NDAs. I can get my team to sign NDAs. I said, and you know, we'll blur out your faces, alter your voices, whatever we need to do Mm -hmm. to make sure that your identity is protected protected 100 i said I, I will guarantee you that i said but you got we have to do it in person and they said they ended up you know some time went by i followed up like once and i didn't hear but i didn't when i didn't hear back the first time i'm like oh yeah that's dead in the water you know but so then i followed i followed up like once or, once or twice and then they finally replied back and they just said um hey you know sorry to waste your time but you know we just feel that because it's a small town everybody knows everybody we just don't we do, we're just not comfortable and confident that our that our identity no offense to you and they're like it's nothing against you nothing personal we're just not confident enough because of your platform etc and depending on how many people will know about it like you know, our team maybe right they're like we're just not comfortable or confident that our identities will will definitely be protected so like they were, we're, we're gonna have to pass and sorry for wasting your time and i was like whatever so that was like a like a like a uh, a show that wanted to be done no this was and- just somebody somebody wanted to be a guest on my show <clears throat> they want and to- not do it in person I don't know what their intention was because they didn't say like they didn't actually say like, oh, like, can we do it virtually or can we do, you know, like they didn't say I when I emailed back, I gave them my 
stipulations. Because I wasn't, I, I, I just, I wasn't gonna do like. I'm sorry, but I'm gonna. I need to know who you are. Like, I'm not gonna like. You're not gonna hide behind a, a computer screen with your face blurred in your, yeah. and your. And I'm not. And it's your, and it's your uncle. That. And it's your uncle George. Yeah, like no thanks, <laughs> Uncle George. You know what I mean? Like, like but sometimes nah. I like to go down the street. <laughs> yeah, and make poops in the yards. So, it so, pays so well. I mean, you know, they they obviously ended up declining and saying like, hey, like we don't want to do it anymore. But even if, it, you know, if they didn't agree to my terms, I just would have told them no because I, I just. It's not worth it. At it's that not point. worth it. Yeah. Are, you, are you? Are you? Are you just like it? The fact that you're open to that, mm -hmm. to have that like discussion, like it seems like you're open to basically any walk of life, pretty much any person, yeah. as long as it seems like it's going to be, and it doesn't necessarily have to be entertaining. It could. It could just be interesting. 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 Just interesting. Yeah. Just interesting. That's it. Yeah. Are you starting? To, do you think? Do you think you've found your most interesting guest yet? You know, that's uh. You know, I will. Or you think there's more? <sighs> I mean, there's always more. There, there definitely is. I mean, I think I, I, you know, I, I, after every show that we do, I always like, whenever I have one that I think is like a banger, you know, I'm like, I look back and I'm like, wow, that was that was fucking crazy. Like that guest was fucking crazy. But then somebody else then eventually comes along and I say the same thing again. Yeah, like that was so nuts. It, yeah, like it's always like, oh, then mm -hmm. it just it just it goes to the next level and then the next level and then the next level. And I think, I mean, you know, obviously I've had some famous people on here and there. Um, but like when we took the show to Nashville um, in it was uh, August of 2023. So, you know, just uh, the end of last summer that doing that really that was like a that was like a pivotal moment, I think, too, for us. I, th I for think I think I think whatever I think that was there was some sort of cocoon and you guys came out of it after that. Yeah. That Tennessee trip. Yeah, it was I mean, like. I, I, I it, you went from pupa to it, like it changed, butterfly. It, it actually changed my life. Like I'm, I'm not even joking. And I know people probably like, oh, what the fuck? What the hell? You know, you're you know, people are probably like, oh, you're crazy. But like that literally changed my life. Like the people I met there, the relationships that we built in that short amount of time that we were there, the, the four episodes that we did, like it was it was fucking awesome. Like, what, what made you want to do that? So I uh, I just met a guy named Edward Crow. He's a man. He's a manager for Yellow Wolf, a uh, rapper from uh, Nashville, and um, he. Uh, him and I have been connected on on Instagram for a long time, mm -hmm. and we just got talking one day, and you know we we weren't like we didn't really know each other like at all, and one day we just started talking, and again, even though we were following each other on Instagram, he almost didn't even realize didn't even know I had a podcast. I mean, that's how even though we follow each other, that's how distant we were from each okay. other, right? We got talking on the phone, and I'm just like, oh yeah, like I just I'm like I see like you're into photography, like that's cool, you know, like look you do some cool shit, right? And he's just, and then he's like, oh yeah, yeah, I'm, and I started saying something because I listened to it. There was an episode of a podcast that he was on. And I forget what show it was, somewhere down near him, but I uh, I was like, oh yeah, like I heard the I heard whatever whatever about you on that on you know on a podcast. He's like he's like well, how? He, before I even said podcast, he's like where'd you hear that? I said oh I said I listened to that podcast episode you were just on like a week ago. He's like oh no shit oh, okay yeah, and I was like yeah I said like I have a podcast myself so that which is conversation mm -hmm. you know like and i was just like yeah i have a podcast myself he's like oh really like and he's like he's like what what is it like what what do you talk about and i just gave him a 30 second what about it and he's like well he's like if you're ever looking for like a guest like somebody like me to come on and talk about psychedelics and maybe a little bit in the music industry too he's like but i'm super passionate about psychedelics and uh uh ever crow shout out to ever crow by the way he's the dopest dude in the world um but yeah, he uh, he's like he's like if you're interested in having somebody like me on the show, like let me know. Mm -hmm. And I was like I was like all right, yeah, man, cool. And he's like I have a one sheeter. I'll send you a one sheeter a little, little bit about me and like you know what I'm knowledgeable about and what I would like to talk about. And he goes if it's a fit for you, let me know. And I'm like yeah, cool, man, sure. Hung up the phone. He sent me the text. And then uh, I think it might have been like the next day I called him. I was like yo, bro. I'm like listen. I was like I I would obviously li like to have you on. And uh, I said but I said like I'd rather not do it virtual. I said I realize you're not gonna fly up here from Nashville, <laughs> right? Like. You know, unless like you're on tour, unless you guys are on tour and you happen to be stopping in the Pocono. I was like, but I was like, but uh, I was like, to be honest, I was like, I'd make a trip out of it because I actually had another friend in the music industry down another couple of friends in the music, in music industry down in Nashville that just moved there not long ago. So uh, I was like, listen, I was like, I will, I'll literally pack up my gear and come to you. I said, if, if you're willing to give me the time to, for me and my guy to come to Nashville, we'll pack up our gear. I said, we'll come, we'll, we'll, we'll fucking do it right in person, mm -hmm. nothing virtual. I was like, well, come do it right. I said, we've always wanted to do like a road show. And I'm like, this, this will be like our first one. I'm like, if you're down for that, I said, let me know when you're available. I said, and we'll come. And he goes, yep, I'm down. I'm like, cool. When? How's two weeks from now? He goes, perfect. I'm like, great. Set a date. See you then. And, and then, and then he's like, you need any other guests? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, if you, yeah, if you have any cool people, he's like, yeah, I might have a couple of you. Right. 
so he, he ended up he did end up hooking me up with a with a with a with a, uh, a really cool guest um that we just like like i met a guy his name is baldacci he's from uh, south central la uh he's a gang he's currently still uh you know in a gang he's been in the gang his whole life since he was like 13 blood or crip um is uh neither and it's um oh god i'm blanking out um latin king no it's uh god why am i i don't think i i, I don't think you expected to get the test on la gangs ms13 yeah nope <laughs> no, uh, those are the i i totally i totally butchered this i'm looking it up because I, I don't want i don't want to say the i don't want to say the wrong he's got a tattoo to right on his face too i shot a movie we shoot, i helped shoot a movie in south central it's uh florence florence he's florence district it's um god damn why am i blanking out on this i'll think of it but uh but yeah anyway it's 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 like a primarily like hispanic uh gang and um but yeah so i ended up i ended up meeting him through ever crow uh and, and he's, he's a musician too he's a rapper and he's made he's made music with yellow wolf which ever crow manages yellow wolf so that's yeah, how okay. that's how like you know we you know, one night Edward invited us out and we were with the whole Slum American is is the label uh, is um, uh, Yellow Wolf's music label. It's called Slum American. And there's obviously other musicians on the roster. Um, but she's not a Slum American, but he, he is part of it just because they him and Yellow Wolf have some hit songs together. But uh, literally the, the Baldacci interview, ha- like it happened, like I, I met him through ever like we met in person like we were just we all went out one night after they shot a music and they shot a music video for one of yellow Wolf's songs that just came out not long ago they shot a music video and everybody that was in the music video like dj paul from three six mafia like all these guys from the shoot were then we all went out together like that night like we just hung out with all of them that night and then as we were there it was like yo like he's like when are you guys leaving again i'm like um oh, I'm, I'm i forget i think we had like two or three more days and I, st- I, I still had like one or two other um lined up and he's like oh he's like uh he's like is there any, you know, can you fit another one in? He goes, I might, if you want, he goes, if you're interested, he goes, I might be able to get you. He's like, look around the room right now. And it was filled with, <laughs> literally, it was filled with like 50 musicians. Yeah. And he's like, he's like, he's like, is anyone here? Would you be interested in anyone here? And I'm thinking to myself like, Edward, are you fucking serious? Of course I'm fucking, of course yeah, I'm interested. Yeah. Right. And, uh, and he suggested, how about Baldacci? Now, I, do you seen him? Do you know what I'm uh, talking about? Dang, you pull this up. Can you pull, Whoa. just pull. Yeah. How about oh, this? Yes. He's now telling you what to do. You like I this? I love it. It won't do it justice until until you see. Um, fabulous if you want to see him. F A B O L O U S. Did it again. Did it again. I got it. How'd I sound? I have you on the camera this time too. Good. Thank you. We'll I, I, that for later. So yeah. these are both the same. So what's the name? Thunderbird or something? Yeah. Um, but yeah. Did so you say Thunderbird. What am I look? What am I looking up here? Oh, uh, just, just my my YouTube channel. Oh. Just look up uh, the pull up the and oh. just and you can scroll back and then go to my show specifically, and uh, just just so you can see. Go to videos, Dan. You no, know, you can just scroll down to my playlist. Go down. Nope, he doesn't like to listen. Yep. Go yes, yeah, just scroll down. Uh, wait, where the hell are you? Go up top. He hit go, video. Home, go back home, to home. Home. Scroll down. Okay, okay. So go to go up a little bit. Okay, click where it says on the stack next to play. I don't hit play. I'll hit the. I hit, okay. Yeah, go back and just hit the thing next to it. Hit the. Yeah, see, he's good for yeah. something. So hit where it says on the stacks. Go left. Hit that. Okay, you want that open? Yep. Gotcha. This, this easier. Fi- okay, now scroll scroll down a little bit. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. You want to go back like six months. It's not too. It's not that far. It's right there. Okay, so a little bit down. See Balda- Baldacci. Oh boy, where am I? Oh, okay, right there. And actually, click on it because the gang name is in there. Um. Oh uh, yeah. Scroll down in, in the bot in the in the description. Uh. Florence District. Does it say Florence Thirteen? Florence. Flor- yeah, Florencia F- Thirteen. F Thirteen. F Thirteen. Yeah. Yeah. F, okay. F stands for yeah. You know, Florencia. Florence. Florencia. Yeah. So that yeah. Florence is the district in LA's LA. largest Latino gang. Yes. So yeah. So anyway. So this yeah. So th- so um. Baldacci. Shout out to Baldacci. By the way. Super, Who lit super that? Cool dude. What's that? Who lit that? We did. Did Eric? Yeah. He did a good job. But I'm taking credit for the blue light. A hundred percent. And Eric <laughs> will vouch that that was all me. We were just um, talking about this yesterday. Dan oh yeah. And I, it be like, man, you got in a podcast. He's got like a little kiss of purple or a little kiss of blue. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, look, look at this. Just scroll up so we can see his hat. Look at this. Look at this. Ready? Look Dan at the blue. Look at scroll. the light. Look at that light. Looks great. Fucking perfect. Obviously, it's, it's it's dramatic intentionally, right? The lighting on his face or the lack thereof. You know. Um, so if you have then, no prep to talk to that guy, no, I I met him before this interview. I met him. I met him twelve hours before this. Twelve hours. And you had no. It would, how does that how does how does that work with 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 that are you like i'm just gonna we're, it's just like you and i are just two dudes just on a park bench it. just I, trying I mean, to figure I mean, it I, out I, you know i that that night like you know so i i i mean i knew of, him he's, he's in he's also in the netflix documentary with uh estevan oriel do you know who estevan oriel is mm-hmm. from la he's the most famous uh photographer you know um cartoon the tattoo artist 
Mm-mm. Come on. Oh. All right. So I'm not up with your okay. kid All shit. Right, listen, car- cartoon <laughs> tattooed every musician that you know. Cartoon did 50 Cent's entire back. Post Malone? Cart- prob- I mean, probably. Cartoon did all of Eminem's tattoos. Okay. Okay. So I probably do. I so just, if, if, so there's, there's, um, the, I forget the name of the documentary. I'll try to think of it, but there's a documentary on Netflix, um, with Estevan Oriol and cartoon. So they became like business partners, the two of them back in like the eighties or nineties, they were the only two guys. Um, you know, one was, one was ink and guys in, in the back room famous, like, like fucking Eminem and these guys, right. Cartoon was, he's like one of the most famous uh, tattoo artists in the whole world ever. So he's, he was tattooing these guys. And then Estevan Oriol is the only guy who had a fucking camera back then. And he doc, he had so much content of all these concerts and like mega, mega, mega people. Like, and he, he, he like video, still photography and videography back in like the eighties and nineties when he was, there was times where he was the only photographer like at, at these concerts. He was the only guy that actually had footage like backstage with all these famous people. So long story short, they, there, there's a documentary on Netflix about Estevan Oriol and cartoon and how they partnered up and they they built they built a fucking empire together and estevan oriel so baldacci's in the in him and his him and the gang um are in this documentary it's called la originals i just thought of it it's called la originals okay. look it up on netflix you'll fucking love it it's one of the greatest documentaries Dan, ever. pull it up we're gonna watch it yeah oh, cancel the show let's just watch la originals yeah, <laughs> yeah. Anybody? um so I, was anyway. th- I was thinking yeah. about war room <laughs> so i knew a little bit about him before this only yeah. because i from the doc from the documentary okay. I, I watched this documentary okay. a few years it's a few years old it, it's it's not that old it's only a, a documentary only a few years old him he was i mean he was only in there's only like a one or two minute part in the documentary that he's in but it's him and you know other members of 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 F-13 and they show them, you know, sitting on the stoop of the house, actually in the hood where they're from, where they live. Um, because Estevan Oriol, his, one of the things he, he became very famous for is his black and white photography of gang members. I think I, I've seen his Oh, work. you, dude, you 100%. I know I've seen his work. Yes, you have. 100%. Yeah. The, I mean, the guy is, he's world renowned for his, for his photography. But anyway, he was there too. And I, I, I was, we almost, I almost got to sit down with him, but hopefully I'll, I'll get to go to LA and I'll sit down with him maybe. So um, what did you realize so I used to work on. Remember the show Shuns, that so that show <laughs> that show Sons of Anarchy. Yeah, I used to work on that. That's dope. And we would meet like Hell's Angels, like all like all yeah. these fucking Latin yeah. kings, like all this shit. And they always just seem like, oh, you're just you're not bad dudes. Yeah, like you're good dudes. Like they can sit just like this yeah. and have a conversation. I mean, I mean, I'll be I'll be completely honest with you. I mean, you look at them, right? And anyone can anyone's gonna judge them. Right. It's going to be an inference. Right. Like if, if, if you were walking down the street right now and he was walking towards you, would you cross the street? No, I would just mm. take the safety off. Oh, okay. <laughs> right. So, but, but yeah, but, but second uh, amendment joke. Okay. Though. Right. Yeah. So I, I, I get it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just I'm so kidding, we're ready. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I don't have a, uh, there's no safety on, on mine right now. <laughs> yeah. Just by the way, no. he's got a, he's got a fucking uh, uh, rocket launcher. That's what I, I do. I do. It fits right in my bag under yeah. the table. Um, okay. We're going to talk later. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, keep going. Sick actually. But, um, so tell me about Esteban. Yeah. Or oh yeah. So anyway. So yeah. So uh, we got. We, <laughs> Sorry, we we're over here this. trying to seduce each other. Yeah. <laughs> pretty, much, pretty much. Yeah. So yeah. So anyway. So yeah. So All right. I'll put my. Story. I'm sucking on your gun. <laughs> you suck on my gun. <laughs> yeah. It'll be great. Yeah. He's got a real long barrel. Yeah. Um. But yeah. So yeah. So ended up, ended up meeting meeting Baldacci. You know, at the bar. You know, the literally the night before. Uh, I sat down with him here. Yeah, but it was just like, hey, he's like, what about Baldacci? I'm like. That's obviously would be a fucking, you know, this is, this is so weird. I know it's going to sound really weird and I'm not going to lie up until like, you know, for the last, you know, few years that I've been doing this podcast thing, I actually, I want to call it like a dream because it sounds like cheesy and fangirlish and not, and I'm not like a fangirl, right? It's just a goal, I, a goal. Like I always want, to, I, I, I wanted to sit down with a real gang member, like somebody, whether they were, whether they're an ex gang member or still current. I just, I, I don't know. I, I, I think a lot of people would, would agree to this, that there's a certain like fascination with mm-hmm. people like that, right? They're, it's mysterious. It's very, you know what I mean? Like, um, but he's also very entrepreneurial. Like, you know, like you don't realize how smart these guys are. Like these guys are smarter than yeah, they're not most just, fucking they're, smart people. Yeah, they are not Do you know what dumb. I'm saying? Yeah. And, you know, so but anyway, but I mean, just the whole, the whole gang life. I mean, the guy is tattooed 100% head to toe. His eyelids are tattooed. Talk about the dedication to the gang. I mean, he has several, I mean, that 13 on the side of his face is mm-hmm. F13. He has Florencia right here. He has another one right here. He has another one over here. He has another one up here. He has multiple, like when you look at him, you know, his devotion to that gang. It's, 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 it's literally 
tattooed on his, on his fucking face, right? Like, yeah. So, but I mean, obviously, this to me, you know, to me to be able to sit down and interview somebody like him and have a conversation with him, it's it's just to me, it's it's fascinating. Again, like like I was saying before, I'm just genuinely interested in people, and I don't care what walk of life you come from, what you do. Mm-hmm. Um, it's there's just and there's common ground. Like we, there's so much common ground. Like, like you know, and, and when after after this, like people didn't even believe me. I posted a picture of of with a picture of me, him, and his manager at the time because he's you know he's all he's he's also a rapper. And he, you know, he has a manager. Esteban actually became his manager since we met because um, Esteban used to manage other musicians as well back in the day. But uh, but his his other manager, you know, previous manager John um, was with us, and um, I got a picture with with the, the three of us, and it's me and then the two of them, and John's covered up with tattoos, not as much as Baldacci, but. Um, you know, you look at them and you're like, wow, those are, they look like bad fucking scary dudes. Right. And, um, you know, I, a- after I recorded it, like I, you know, I think I said to some of my friends and family and I posted it on Facebook as a teaser, I hardly ever reveal some future guests, but this, like, I, I started to do that more now, mm-hmm. but like this one, I posted like that same night, like, I posted that picture. And I think people didn't think it was real. Like it almost actually looks Photoshopped like this picture. And I'm just going to pull up my phone. Like, while wow, we're talking just so you can see it. Cause it's like, you look at it and you're like. If Dan was proficient, he'd be on your Instagram. You could airdrop it to me if you want. Uh, it's, I think it's on Instagram. I, I, I won't be able to find it in my phone, so I'm just going to scroll back to like my, the the photo I posted. But like, I post that photo and like, and I share with people, and like, people are like, "Are you fucking crazy?" They're like, "You trusted him?" And I'm like, "Yeah." That's a that's isn't that fucked up? The perception, dude. The perception is insane. I'm like, you know what? You, you know what he did? He's as, probably one of the nicest guys you've ever met. You know, you know what he did as soon as as soon as we as soon as we finished recording, he he literally got up and he's like. Thank you. He's like, this was fucking, he's like, this was awesome. He goes, thank you for doing this with me. And we, we, you know, hugged, you know, like, like stole your wallet. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, probably, you know what? No, no, that's where it went. No, I'm, I'm not kidding. kidding. No, no. Well, he um, probably, he lives in a world where everybody wants something from him. The record labels want something from him. Yeah. And then if somebody doesn't want something from him, they probably just have an opinion about him. Here it is. Yeah. That's so like, this was the first teaser about it. That's that was like we that was like five minutes after we recorded the episode. So mm-hmm. you see and you see that and it's like it almost looks fake. Does it not almost like <laughs> kind of look fake? A little bit. Yeah. Like people like look at that and be like, is that real? Can we hold that right there. Yeah, you oh, give it to me. I don't know if the world can. Oh, give yeah, it to Dan. Yeah, he'll it. It might he'll work his magic. There you go. But yeah, like that for a guy finally to have the chance to just like, I'm just yeah, gonna like talk, I'm going to tell my story. Yeah. Nobody and like, wants and, and, he, and he's him. been like he's been on other other shows before. Like this is like this wasn't his first time like on a podcast or whatever or sharing his story. Yeah. But like the, the the thing that I found like so fascinating really was like you know beforehand it was like you know there wasn't really like hey like is there anything really off limits? Like of course I was respectful. I was respectful of colors in the room. These are things a lot of people don't think about. Like I said, I'm like is, obviously he was wearing a blue hat, but I said hey is that blue light okay? Do you want me to change the color? Like I want to misrepresent him. Mm-hmm. I think those are the things that people don't when people see. A podcast or anything like this people don't realize the attention to detail that like goes into these things like i literally i when he sat down i said baldacci i said is that is that, is that blue light okay and he said no he goes that's he goes that's he goes it's it's fine and he goes and thank you for asking there was a that's, mutual respect yeah mm-hmm. there was a mutual respect that like i, I can't even explain even, it i think that even in their world because i've i've played around in different worlds like this i think that even like in all these worlds what i find out is like don't be an asshole and you're, and, good. and you're pretty and you know, good. And they're just regular people. Too. And they are like they have they have they have kids that go to and school. He does, and he has kids. Yep. You know, the thing is, I, that's not even his real name. And I don't know. And nobody knows. Well, that's not his name. Well, there's a lot of people you're in this right. country. No one yeah. knows. <laughs> right. But like, you know, in the, in the, the, other, the other actually the other crazier part of it, I don't think I've ever actually even publicly said this yet about like this interview. Exclusive. Yeah. So his manager, John, like you saw the picture, right? Um, so, you know, we came in this, this that's Yellow Wolf Studio actually right there. Um that's that's where he records. That's awesome. Um but uh Booth is right behind Mason across from him. But uh right before Baldacci came in the room, I mean like we walked in the building and you know, we're all talking and you know, we met the night before, but um John came up to me and he said, "Hey, um he goes uh so he goes I'd like to sit in on the interview too." And I said, "John, I said I said I we were all set up. It took an, it took, you know, as you know, you know, it, it takes, takes time. This is, this was, an, this was an hour and a half setup. Yeah. To lock this, this in. Okay. Plus we were on a fucking time crunch. Yellow Wolf, Yellow Wolf was coming to the studio to record a fucking song right after this. And we yeah. had to get the fuck out. Right? Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. So like, Edward's like, yo bro, make sure you're like, you know, clean, make sure you're out, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, you got it. Good. Right. Time crunch. It took an, it took us an hour and a half. And he's like, Hey, he's like, he goes, I want to be on this. I want to sit on this too. And I was like, again, I'm. I'm I'm sitting like I'm like this close to John and it's like it, you know people be like man like that's like intimidating you know and he's like he goes I want to be in it too he goes he goes I'm not sure I, I'm not sure we're comfortable with just him doing it one on one with you and I said well why not and he's like well he's like you know he 
He goes, I'm the business side of things because you know I'm his manager, right? I get it, hundred percent. I respect all of it, right? He goes, I'm the business side. He goes, he goes, it's just in case like you ask him questions that might have to do with the business. You know, he was like, he goes, those aren't questions that he'll answer. I would. And I said, I get that. And I said, and I, I appreciate that. I respect that. I said, John, I said, I actually don't even have a, another setup here. I said, obviously I said, we're, you know, as he knew like we're from Pennsylvania. I said, I said, John, I said, all due respect. I said, I would love to do this interview one-on-one with Baldacci. I said, just give me the opportunity. I said, I promise you. I said, can, I said, just, I said, just trust me. I said it, I said, It'll be exactly. You'll I said, be happy. I said, I'm not. Yeah, I said I'm not going to pull any punches. I said that's not my mo. I said, and you know, I said, listen. I said, just trust me. I said it's going to be great. I said, and he's like, can I? Can I at least then sit in the room and hang out? There was a, there was a couch like four feet from us. There was a couch. Of, there was probably four people, five people in the room that like watched this live. You know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. And uh. And he goes, all right, you're good. And then he's like, all right, you could do it. Just the two of you. And we did. Yeah. And then afterwards, they both fucking thanked me, and they're like, Bill. You, you were right. And you held to your word. It was great. We loved it. Thank you. If you ever want to come to LA, you let us know. This is, that's what I'm saying. Like you have to, like they respect, and I, and respect. I, and, I, and I said, like, I, I saw, I'll literally take you up on that. As I'm like, I'm, they're like, that would be an awesome experience. Oh yeah. hundred percent. And they got your back cause they can trust you. hundred percent. Like I didn't let them down. They trusted me. I, tr- I trusted them. And like, again, like everybody's like, dude, you're fucking crazy. I'm like, cra- like what? And they're like, were you scared? I'm like, scared of what? I'm like, what? I mean, maybe because he looks scary, right? Mm -hmm. You might look and be like, oh, that guy's like scary looking. But like, but what people don't understand is like they live in a world where there's a code. Yes. And that code is mutual respect. 100%. And that's that's it. It's no different than the mafia. It's no, it's all the same. Yeah. It's a code of mutual respect. And if you you don't have respect. Then you're done. Now we have a problem. Then there's a problem. Yeah. And and why, why would I create a problem? There's no reason. And it's not that I'm afraid, but like, why would I create a problem? Why would why would anyone do that? Why would you create a problem? There's no reason to. You know what I mean? So hey, you're not like, that, you're you're not doing like gotcha journalism. You're just yeah, trying to understand yeah. people. And I guess and, and for you know for for them, I understand they're afraid of the gotcha journalism. And sure. I said, hey, listen, I'm yep. not. I, I said to them, I, I'm not that guy, yep. and I never will be. You know, and and you can you can timestamp this, cut this clip, and, and we can make sure I hold to it forever because like I'm not that guy. Like and I, and I won't be. Like I'm just 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 like we're doing here. Like yeah. it's just a good, real, genuine conversation. Nothing was cut out of that episode. Nothing. Zero. Exactly as that episode went. 100% of that interview right there is exactly how we recorded it. Nothing that's, was taken. That's out. fucking beautiful, man. And like, they, you know, they didn't ask to see anything, obviously, because, well, his manager was in the room and a couple other, you know, people, you know, from, you know, uh, you know, guys, that, you know, that they that are, that are from L.A. as well. Um, but yeah. And I mean, like, you know, he's not really out of the gang and he's open about it. Like, so like, I'm not, I'm not sitting here saying anything that he would disapprove of. Yeah. Because again, everything that I just told you, we talked about, you know, in his episode, like, you know, you know, him, you know, him still being in the gang. Like it's, and it, to him, like it, it, he, it, the way I forget the way he said it, but he goes, he goes, it, we're just family. He says, it's just family. He goes, I don't look at it the way that the world looks at it. He goes, we're just family taking care of each other and watching each, each other's backs. I look at, did you watch Yellowstone? I haven't, but I, are you I, familiar I, I, with it? Hundred percent. They're no different than the Duttons. Like yep. that's how. Like they're no different than the Sopranos. They're no different yeah. than you know. Yeah. It's about family. It's about yep. respect. Yep. It's about getting your own. And you know the the the, the perceptions of violence and all that stuff. I think that f- for the ones who are in charge and part of it, and who've been there from the beginning, that's the thing that they want to avoid. Oh, it's yeah. the young idiots coming yeah. up that create mm-hmm. that the problem, the that are trying right. to prove something. Yes, right. Yeah. And then and they're and then, the ones that get their ass kicked, going like, "We don't, we don't work that way. That's not how we do business." Right, hundred percent. And they're and I don't know, man. Part of me is like, man, they're free Americans. <laughs> 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 you know, I'm like, I'm yeah. kind of jealous of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm going to assume this is one of them, but and I'm not even saying necessarily your most uh, watched or mm-hmm. you know most popular or biggest guest. Yeah. What's been your favorite podcast? You know, that's like picking your favorite child and I can't do that. Oh, I, it's yeah. my daughter. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> but as his I, son's like, <laughs> you know, kinda, kinda, this kind of goes back to like when we were talking about earlier about like, you know, have you ever had a bad guest or, or like, oh my God, like it was the best it's guest. It's like but, the worst. Like you but just like, got to navigate yeah. it. But to me, I always just say like every, every next guest I have, I feel like they always just get, they're, they're unique in their own way. And I really can't put my finger on, will I say that this was probably up, up, up there? Yeah. Like, I, I don't think well, I it's could, profound. That's a big it's deal. It's profound. Yeah. Well, it's a game changer. It's profound. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, I mean, this isn't, you know, I, not, not to like toot my own horn, but who else do you know sat down with a guy like this? Yeah. That has the experience that he's had. Do you know what I mean? Like, 
Like, not around here, man. Right. That, that's what I mean. Like, yeah, not around here. Not, not, not on, you know, little old Bill's podcast, mm-hmm. you know, and not that I'm looking for a pat in the back or anything, but like, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of it, I guess is why I'm saying what yeah. I'm saying. But yeah. like, it's, you know, to me, I guess to me also, again, going back to what I said before, like that was, I guess I always like, I've always been fascinated by whether it was mafia or gang life, just fascinated about all that stuff. It's just a little exciting. How could you not be excited about it? Right. There's I watched something all- romantic about it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So like for me, you know, it was always like a goal to be able to like sit down with like a guy like this. Yeah. And it just fucking fell in my lap. Do you think that um, I think this to a degree, maybe in my own little insanity is that like I don't I'm, I'm not a big fan or trust. How long have we been doing this? Two uh, hours? Like, yeah, almost two and a half hours. I was just saying, see, look, shit. look, I don't even have a text from my wife. You normally I'll get like uh, our like in our like, hey, just just a, a oh, check up. Are you good? I didn't yeah. even get a text yet. Yeah, because we're like the gone with the wind of podcasts. <laughs> um, but <laughs> Lord, like, return of the king extended that, edition of podcast. That 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 if it, like when we're going back to like, oh, my God, like, you know, how is that? Like, how's your wife doing? Like the only the only and it's not even a criticism. It's just her checking on me. The only thing I'll ever hear from her is like, hey, just want to make sure you're still good. It's not even like, where are you at? Why aren't you home? Yeah, my wife yeah. It's, yeah. it's just it's just like, hey, like you're still good, right? Yeah. And I'll just, I'll, I'll yeah. reply back and be like, that's why I looked. That's why I checked. And I'll just reply back. Yep. Yep. I'm good. I'll be done in X amount of time. So I'm like, okay. I look at, I look at what you're doing and what we're doing to a lesser degree as I think, I think news or whatever you want to call it is kind of like going the way of the dodo and nobody really trusts it. I think right now, you know, you don't have to report news. You could have conversations and understand what's going on. hundred percent. And that's why I like what you're doing. Yeah, I likewise. Think you're talking to people like this who no one, you know, you'd, you'd read the, you know. Yeah, the, you would cross the street. The like LA, by analogy yeah, the, L, the LA news station would be like, and another shot down in South Central. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's what you would hear about it. Yes. And instead of sitting down talking. And actually having a conversation and not not a gotcha. Yeah. It is, and, I'm, and I'm not here to chastise or criticize. You just want to understand. and and, 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 and yeah. that's the crazy Understand thing. where you come from. Correct. And then how much we, we have in common. Mm-hmm. I think that's, I think. <laughs> a lot. I'm the guy now who's like truth and hope. Like if you can, if you can sit and talk to people and get some truth and, and be honest, I think that's what it is. It's about an honest sincerity and to be like, Hey, tomorrow's not going to be the, the fucking worst day of your life. Yeah. You know, yep. these are things that you talk to people about where they yeah. go through terrible shit and yeah. then they, most of them, hopefully. Yes. Overcome yes. It. Make it through, overcome it and do yeah. something different. Yeah. That's why I like, that's why yeah. I, I, I'm a huge fan of what you do. Yeah. And thank you. And I appreciate that. And I, I'm, I'm grateful to be here, to be on your show. I th- thank all of you guys. I'm, I'm not trying to end the show by any means. I know it sounds like I'm we like, are. It's like a closing statement but that, <laughs> that, and that's okay too. I'm kind of done okay here, Bill. It's <laughs> <laughs> past his bedtime. Yeah, uh, he shit his pants twice. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering what that smell was actually. Huh? It kind of smells um, like fruity, but I don't know why. Yeah. Yeah. Not sure. Hopefully no, no, no. Not. I wanted, I wanted yeah. to say that because, because like, I, I, you know, I, I do have to pee again. Okay. And I'm looking. He's pregnant. I'm yeah, just, must be. I think it's important. Like, I think, I think on the stacks, people like Kevin over at the middleman, you know, us to some fucking degree, like we're the controversial ones because. Yeah, and I've, and I've become more controversial too. Which I, I mean, love. like stuff like that. Like, I mean, like I, that, that's the thing with me. Like I, I, I'm also like looking for guests like that, that I'm looking for things that people wouldn't, people wouldn't expect to be on my show, but they're not an oddity. Right. Do you exactly. know what I mean? Yes. Like they're just misunderstood yeah. people. Like, <sighs> yes, we got so we got some shit for the guests we had on last week. But, you know, I just want to uh, my whole motive on the whole thing is, is like you have these preconceptions. Um, let us either dissuade or persuade you yep. that those preconceptions are right or wrong. Mm-hmm. And I think there's a lot to people's stories instead of just having it be like just this this. This is this is what I was told they did. This is how I was told to feel about it. And this is how I'm going to feel about it. Mm-hmm. And I think that you got to give people an opportunity to explain themselves yeah. and, and, and with nuance and and a longer yes. format and, and, than and, and a soundbite. Yeah. And in a place that they feel like they could actually be themselves. And talk. that's hard because that's very difficult. And that, that mm-hmm. that's one compliment that mm-hmm. a lot of people have said to me when they've came on the, my show. They, they're just like, Bill, you, you just made me feel so comfortable that that's why I just did a tell all on your show. Cause I've had a lot of those people, I've had a lot of people yeah. come on my show that like for the first time ever did like a tell all, like a reveal of like yeah. whatever it was. Like, do you ever notice shit, it? Do you know? ever notice at the end they're kind of exhausted? Yeah. They're like, cause it's emotional. It's emotionally. It is. Yeah. Oh, the weight. hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. It was kind of, kind of like me on my own show for 200. Talking that, about that, that seemed shit. cathartic. Oh, to you. dude, dude. Like I was, that was years of built up shit. 
And like, even now, even doing this now, this is still the same thing. It's a little different because I'm not as emotional as I was then because that was two weeks after the AFib. You know, I'm obviously like a month and a half or almost two, two months. I lost track of time beyond that. But like, like even this now, again, like going back to the conversation how we were talking about, like leaving your job and taking that jump and that leap and the way the world mm-hmm. lifts up your shoulders, like me doing that episode was that, but again, just me being here today and doing this, like I, I, I'm not gonna lie when I told Dan, like hey, fuck you yeah in, in the dm a while back like i couldn't who do you think I, you are trying to talk to me peasant <laughs> like i couldn't yeah seriously who the hell is this yeah. guy right i was like why is this guy you know yeah. um but Fat like ginger leprechaun <laughs> yeah. but I, I couldn't i couldn't wait for the day for me to message back to whoever and i couldn't remember who it was but i think it was him first. and i was wondering why it was him I, first i dm'd you and i was like wait the conversation's not there because i didn't even remember who it was right but uh, I couldn't wait. It's not th- real memorable, right? I well, know. I just because I didn't know him. I knew you. I've been here since the start, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Dan. It's okay. Sorry. But, hey, I, like, hey, you got the hat, though, bro. <laughs> He's like the cat on Elf. You always knew it was there, but you never really yeah. knew. Uh huh. Sorry, but, like, we kept cutting you yeah, off. No, it's all good. But I, I couldn't wait to c- finally come back to you and say, like, "Yo, I'm ready." Yeah. Like, I was looking forward yeah. to this. The day I told him no was the uh, from that day forward. I just could not wait to be able to come back and say, "Hey, I'm ready." Yeah. Hey, I'm ready to talk. I'm ready to be here. I'm ready to talk because now I can show up as me. On what list were we, like, where were we on the list for I'm ready to talk? Uh, well, you're the first one. No, you're not. We're the they're, first ones that you're, you, the, you're the guest on. You're the first. You're the, you guys are the first one. Get the fuck you're out the of first here. One. I mean, I, 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 I do have a few others lined up. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, but we're the first. But this, this, your episode will most likely come out before the others. Like the next one I'm doing is we're recording, I think next Tuesday, which and I don't know when that's going to come out. Cause you're I haven't out, asked. You're out Monday, bro. Well, there you go. And then yes, you are, you are the first and, I, and yeah. You, you were probably you guys were the first honestly that I messaged back. Are you honored? Because I'm honored. Like, I'm, I'm not. I'm really not joking when I said like like hey like I couldn't wait for the day not not just you guys but everybody but I couldn't wait for the day to come back and be like hey because you he may have thought I was like just fucking you know pussing out or like being like a weirdo or like no, I didn't want to do it. No, I think it. he said he goes I te- I I messaged that Bill guy. He's kind <laughs> of a prick. Yeah, I, yeah I think probably. Yeah. Hey, you know, and that, that's okay if he did. Like, it's, all, it's all forgiven now, you know. But uh, but no, like I'm just because uh, I I knew like I would come back. Like I fully had 100 no, 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 had you, the intention. I, just so it, everyone knows that your response was not dismissive. So I, I'm, I'm just trying yeah, to break yeah, your yeah. ball. Yeah, oh, yeah. No, you, you no, not, no, yeah, it was very, yeah. I'm not ready right now. Yeah, yeah. I need some yeah. time. And I was like, but, okay. Yeah, but the point of it is, like I was saying, like, it's you know, not I, you, I, it's I, me. Yeah. 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 I won't keep dragging on. Uh, Dan wants to go to bed. But uh, <laughs> but I just, like I said, I couldn't wait. For, like like I said, like just doing these, like coming on doing these shows because yeah, like, it's, it's, it is, it's cathartic. Yeah. Um, did you have fun? Yeah. Okay. I, I just A want, lot of fun. I want to make sure that you're pleased. This is great. Pleased. Yeah. Actually, I'm not. Cut this show. No. Because <laughs> we're the second one we don't really Technical yeah. error. Because yeah. we're here to Another steal all your fucking sponsors. Yeah. Yeah. No, good. Yeah, please. Yeah. And pizza Go time. And that, that's, <laughs> that pizza time. You know what? Take, you actually take the show. It's yours. <laughs> <laughs> take it. Brian, he gave us a show. All right. Brian, you're coming to Scranton now. He gave us pizza time. He gave us more work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I think I think what you're building is is commendable. I think I th- I think there's. I think there's going to be a lot of people who are jealous about what you're doing there. And, you know, and there is and, I, and I'm, I'm really starting to get a lot more hate now, but that's OK. I'm not even going to give them time of day to talk. You're over about the target, it. brother. Mm-hmm. You're over the target. Oh, I'm a big target. Do your thing. Uh, always, yeah. though. All, I mean, and, and, and I don't need to tell you this. You already do it. You you mentor people. Yeah. 100%. You, you answer the call. You're not fucking dismissive, at least in our experience. Yeah. Um, I think you're I think you're a great, great dude. Thank and you. I and I think that you uh, I think you got a great, great wife. And I haven't met her, but from the way you talk about her, I can tell. Yeah. And that's all you fucking need. And mom. And Shout out to mom. Yeah, Sue. yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, like, because she's going to watch this, by the way. She's going to watch the 100%. Sue, of this. I'm sorry for cursing. Oh, my God. Fast forward to the first 10 seconds or whenever I flipped out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, she's going to watch it. Yeah, let's she's... tell Sue at the end to skip the first Yeah, 10. I realize. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell Now that you've made it this far, Sue, <laughs> yeah. go back and not watch that. Yeah, don't do that. Yeah. Um, yeah. What? So, what can we look forward to in the future? Just keep building it, man. Like I said, like I said earlier, we're looking to build more shows. We're looking to do more content. Like we're just uh, we're we're a new media company. Is 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 what on the stacks is on the stacks went from just Bill Corcoran Jr.'s podcast to now we're a full blown media company. And there's there's so much opportunity. And to be honest, I want to say like I don't know where we're going because I know where we're going. But there's I just I know like in a few years from now we're probably gonna be doing shit and as will you that we didn't even know that we'd be doing. I and, might and I might be sleeping under a bridge. You don't fucking know. Well, listen, I'll I'll, well, come, we'll, I'll come interview. We'll come and do a You'll documentary about you. Listen, <laughs> listen, your 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 whole reign with the homeless that'll end because you're gonna be, then become one of them. And then I'll take over for you. Okay, yeah. And then you can get fair? me off the streets. Is that fair? Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. He's no. already working real hard on the look. Yeah. Good. I, well, I don't know how to <laughs> shave or grow hair, so fuck off. Um, <laughs> Sue, sorry. We're I, so sorry. Sorry. She'll like, get, like she'll get said, a kick out of this. I, yeah. I, 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 I can't say it enough, man. I, I've been watching it since you started doing it. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, and I think, I think that like, I can't say it enough, man. I, I'm so, and we just met basically, yeah. but I'm very proud of you. Uh, I'm excited to see what's happening in the future. And if you ever need a fucking hand with anything, you got three dudes who will be there. Absolutely. I appreciate that. I will 100% take you up on it if I need to. But don't make it be like something stupid where it's like, you know, I need to move a couch. Okay. You know right. what I mean? Shit. I, do I mean, we probably I do, do have it. a couch that I need to move. I'd but. still do it, but like. I'll get, I'll get some different guys for that. Um, Bill Corcoran Jr. on the stacks. Pizza time. <laughs> pizza, <laughs> pizza time. Subscribe. Leave, uh, leave hate comments, please. They uh, help. They help the algorithm too. Food fight. Uh, leadership decoded. Um, on YouTube. Everybody go watch any of these. Uh, start with on the stacks and then you'll learn the extended universe from that. <laughs> Um, thank you so much for being here. Really appreciate it. Uh, Dan. I want to thank our latest new sponsor, Can Social Tonic. (laughs) Simple, all natural ingredients. Use promo code WAWP at checkout for your discount. (laughs) He made it. He made the shot. He did. Do we have that on camera? No, (laughs) I can't believe he made that shot. Ah, that was unbelievable. Oh my god. Is this the? Is this? You're doing this real quick. Let's see. Do it real quick. What are we doing? This would be like a little the podcast he was on. Yeah, here we go. Oh, what a week it's called. What a week. Yeah, I I, Dan made it. Okay. I will say the quality though. I I was expecting more. Like I thought you were expecting more. I thought it was pretty good. I thought the the video quality was good. Was nice. Yeah, Yeah, very good. No, it's nice. It's these guys who have money and they do these podcasts. No, exactly. It's like the token. Well, whatever. So go ahead. (laughs) A man. It was nice. Not, not, not guys, guys with money. money. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Thank you. Thank you.